Hello, everybody. Welcome to Launch Point Draft Cup number nine. We are just getting started with play all three groups. I'm Kater, and I'm joined here today by OBT. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. All right. So we're going to get started off Splat Zones on Anchovy Games. We'll be watching 50% Norwegian versus Supernova. Uh, the real, definitely the real actual Supernova that you all are thinking of. <laughs> Yeah, what absolutely. are you talking about? We got we got the real supernova to come participate in Launch Point Draft Cup. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so a little bit about these teams. Fifty percent Norwegian is a full EU team, which is kind of a miracle because we don't get too many EU players in here, and they are, as the name would suggest, fifty percent Norwegian. And Supernova is actually, unfortunately, not our actual supernova, but I, I'm I'm sure we'll still be getting a good show from them. Yeah, you know, I always think it's funny with the the way uh, team names work is that there's just been so many teams across, you know, on the many years that Splatoon 2's been out that it's really hard to, you know, not recycle names. Like, there's been, like, a million times mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And was, we were just talking to Mu about this, but, like, you know, anytime you get people in the same time zone, especially those really far ones like Ocean or EU, it's pretty yeah. remarkable. Yeah, sometimes time zone uh, time zones are very difficult, especially when you're making teams like this. So it's really nice that we're able to get an EU team together. All right, we'll be starting off uh, Splat Zones on Anchovy for this first game of our play all three set. And we're just heading in. So I don't, I mean, I don't know too much about these players. I've seen some of them around. I've seen like a Splat Squid I recognize, but not, not all of them. So I'm definitely excited to see what they bring out. Ancho is one of those that doesn't, doesn't necessarily heavily favor too many different weapons. You know, I mean, I've seen E-leaders pulled out here with success. Slosher is pretty much anything can work here. And we're almost about to head into this game. So uh, we'll be seeing those weapons very soon. Yeah, and, you know, I was thinking uh, before this thing, that's my favorite part about Launch Point is you see these people mm -hmm. that you may not, not may not have necessarily heard of, but either way, they're uh, eligible for. But let's hop into, you know, uh, Splat Zones Ancho. Absolutely, yeah. Just the, you get to shine a spotlight on all of these players that have been participating in MIT's events, been hanging out, and it's really fun to see how it works. All right, we got our team comps here. We have a lot of, we have some interesting stuff coming out here. Uh, we've got that mini splatling, which I really like because it can put down a lot of turf, the CDS as well. And then on the other side, we got that, uh, that is a vanilla squiffer there, and then the blob deco. So that blob also going to put down a lot of paint, a lot of range. That's going to be really valuable. Yeah, and you already see uh, the purple team going in there with the missiles. I, 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 you know, it's funny that people always talk about going for early missiles, but I really do think it's it's key to win that first engagement. As you do say that, you know, uh, the purple team's got the zone right now. Yeah, oh, make that a full team. wipe! Oh that's, my gosh! Yeah, but it's 50% Norwegian there that got the uh, wipe, so really, really nice opening, and you can see Squashy on the CDS has that storm at the ready. The ink armor as well, using those goggles really, really effectively there, uh, and getting an assist as well for their trouble. There is the storm as well to add insult to injury, and they have just uh, really the uh, Norwegian here has got Supernova confined to their base, getting these picks. That is another three down, and the Soda here is in trouble. So that is pretty much a full life right there, unless they can find a way to get out. I mean, if they really can't, with not with this Buya aimed directly at the spawn, getting a pick as well, it's going to be so difficult. And this Squi this Squiffer definitely has a good idea here, coming up uh, over here on the, the higher point, trying to get a better angle, but. It might be a little bit too late as they get kicked off themselves and we've got a very decisive first game there oh my goodness i know if you blink and you miss it everyone in the audience but man that was crazy yeah. i mean that's a classic textbook yeah. uh game lockout. of zones I mean, we, yeah you get the wipe once go for the locker i mean i knew it was really bad when i saw the cds put up in office i was like oh that is not where you want to be on the other team oh yeah i mean the the, the way that 50 percent norwegian just kind of came around and I, 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 we talk about the CDS, I love that off angle that they took, and the, the storm, the chip damage, everything just immediately went in their favor there. But of course, this being play all three, Supernova can definitely come back and take this next game. That was, that was quick, they can just take a breather, recover from it, and go into this new map with a fresh mind, which is going to be tower control on the reef. Yeah, uh, I think that's really big about uh, when the game ends that quickly. I mean, you really just kind of walk it off. I think it's a test of the player's mentality of how they can come back for that. Because, I mean, seriously, we have no idea. I've seen so many teams come from a very decisive uh, loss first game to winning the set, you know, 2-1. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I, I, uh, Supernova is definitely not out of this by any stretch. And I, I just hope they can get the adjustment there. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, this being the, the first match of the game as well, you don't have that the, the stamina test, the fatigue that kind of tends to set mm -hmm. in. I mean, when we talk about, you, you, you see that a little bit more in, in those later sets, semis, grands. I mean, I once saw grands that went to a game 14, and by the end, you could almost tell that the players were just sticking to what they knew. Early on in the tournament, you, could, you still have a lot of that energy, so you could definitely bounce back from that. And you can tell that they already know what they want to play. They've already all readied up as well. Yeah, and that's the, the hard thing about uh, playing this early in the tournament is, I mean, you have no idea. Maybe, you know, one of their teammates was late or something, or they weren't able to find a scrim beforehand. So, you know, I mean, you have no idea where everyone's at mentally. But you do, as you mm -hmm. start to play through the event, you start to see, okay, you know, on this map, we're doing this comp. You know, on this map, we're doing this comp. It does get a little easier as it progresses. So, I mean, uh, just starting off here, but I, I think it's really anyone's set right now. Yeah, the thing about Launchpoint Draft Cup is it, some teams get to practice a lot beforehand, some teams barely get to practice at all, and so you kind of see this synergy develop throughout the tournament. It's really interesting to see the growth of all these players. Uh, some Absolutely. of them maybe have ne never even heard of each other, and it, it's really one of the cooler things about an event like this where we kind of put people together and see what happens. Yeah, you know, again, long-term friendships will come from this, but as we get started here on TC Rift, we're going to see the comps in just one second. Ooh, Nautilus. So the, the the Nautilus, and then a switch to the vanilla slosher instead of that soda. Uh, we have the Capro coming out as well, and the Blob wearing Thermal Ink, the Blob Classic. We're going to be seeing a lot of those silhouettes. Uh, we do, we do of course, have just the early take of the, the tower. I do like a little bit of splitting up here, having one person go down, take that tower while the other people go down onto the bridge. Unfortunately, with the, I think that's a VDX going down, which is definitely fair. The missiles, the sensor, uh, the, they'll be forced to back up just a little bit more. Yeah, you know, you kind of saw it there. Uh, the, now, the cool thing, the, the only downside about when you split up like that is you're not there for the initial bridge fight, which is super big for specifically TC uh, on the Reef, man. And you see that now. I mean, uh, three down on the side of 50% uh, Norwegian. This looks like a really good opportunity for Supernova to put themselves on the board early and see if they can clear this first checkpoint. Yeah, well, with the amount of control they have around it, that first checkpoint is going to fall with almost no resistance. You can see the, the blob does go down, which does mean that they, they have to probably wait just a little bit longer for that first to come back. Slaughter goes down as well, but we do have the Zaps fighting the CDS, uh, the VDS, excuse me, and ooh, that being the three down, the Zap did pop the armor, but I don't think it went off uh, early enough. So the blob does have their special, I think that is the, the suction rush blob, which is going to be great for a lot of area control, especially given the, the path, the long path that this tower has to take, but just have to wait a little bit longer. And I mean, 50% Nor Norwegian isn't even letting that happen. They're also past that first checkpoint. They they have the armor and they're getting a lot of picks right now. They get the lead as well. All of these specials are going at it just the right time, which is really, really, really nice. Yeah, pretty much that entire time you were talking, I mean, you just saw 50% of Norwegian do a really, really good coordinated push. Man. You know, again, like you said, the special coordination was very well. Now, I find that, you know, it's always like when I'm like, man, they should use the special. They just nail it right there. And I mean, you can see how, I mean, the 10 6 from Rainy, I don't know if uh, oh. no, Super Noble can be able to get back in here. And as I say that, uh, that is going to be a 2-0. Victory for side of 50% Norwegian. Now, remember, this is play all three, so they do have to have a game three to see if they can get at least a game that always works out that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, I mean, that was just, uh, again, another textbook push for 50% Norwegian. I think this team, uh, either, I don't know if it's just they have a lot of comp experience or maybe they just have a lot of synergy, but very good stuff for them. One push tower kick. Yeah, that was super nice. I really like the the special timings from all that. I mean, we saw the the booyah bomb trap the blob lobber in a really unfortunate <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. place, but that's a really good placement. You put it where you think that they're gonna go, cut off their uh, move, cut off their escape route, and then use that movement to trap them, and it worked out really well. Uh, like you said, we we are going to see that game three, so really hope that Supernova can come come back from this. Maybe take this last game. We're going to clan blitz on Piranha Pit, which honestly could play completely differently from the other maps that we've seen as well. I mean, we know how Stolly clan blitz can get, and with this one map just being one long sightline, uh, if somebody has a, a weapon like Jet or like Bamboo, this is now the time to pull it out. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know if you know, so I, my team, uh, Quadrant Vanguard, we love P-Pit Clams, so like, I mm -hmm. am very familiar with this map. Now, the hard thing about P-Pit Clams, I feel like in particular, is, man, it is great when you are an advantage, but, gee, man, it is just so hard to get back in there, especially oh, when yeah. they have control of right in front of your basket. You know, let's say they put, like, three right in front of basket, one right before, right in front of your drop, kind of by stairs. I, it's just very, very hard to get in sometimes, so I really hope that Supernova is able to, you know, keep that calm collectedness and be able to drop in, you know, if they get in disadvantage. Same thing for those. I think, really, the, the winner of these kind of games are the ones who can 
could be good on offense and defense on this map. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to really realize when you're a little bit trapped, you got to wait that couple seconds to build up special to get your teammates back behind you, and then you can break out of that lockout, which, I mean, we've been seeing the the, the lockout. The, the I mean, that first game, if that's anything to go by, 50% Norwegian is more than capable of putting down something like that. So I do hope that Supernova recognizes both teams, of course, when you need to play a little bit more slowly, when you need to, to, to rush in and take advantage of that opportunity. It's a valuable skill to be able to know when to push and when to hang back. Absolutely, we're getting into this game number three here. Uh, I'm expecting it's probably some similar comps uh, at, mm -hmm. the, at this point, because again, you know, this is their third game together. And yeah, Squash oh. sticking to that. Now the, the CDS finally, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it looks like a pretty similar comp. Double bucket though, coming out from the side of, I believe that's oh. Supernova. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. I mean, really, other than the, con the, the conveyor belts and a couple of those, those slopes, you don't have too many off angles to work with, but the soda here, um, oh, that is, I was going to comment on the soda, but that is a very quick three down. We do have two picks go down uh, on the, uh, the other side as well, but we t immediately that, immediately they're just going to throw that in, and, and now Supernova's been put on the back foot, this is going down, Splat's good, doing their best, popping the armor as well, they're putting down the paint that they can and going to find, so that is a relatively quick cleanup there, uh, down to 59, so nice for a, a very fast opening push, but 50% uh, Norwegian did also pretty much get wiped from that, which is going to result in them losing a lot of that map control, and now you can see this try here has so much area to, to, to remain in control and use all that Wow, but as I say that, man, 50% uh, Norwegian with a crazy pinch. I saw the ink come out behind him. I knew they were in trouble because they were already two down there. And right now you see, I think it's Tyru is set up right yeah. under their basket in a horrible place to try nice. to uh, get them out of there. But as I say that, man, the bucket, or sorry, the Kaysha gets them out of there. Yeah, a lot of picks going down right now, resulting in another three down on Supernova. Uh, that basket did get broken somewhere in there. Uh, 47 remaining now, and that try does have some more clams to their name. And we have a lot more coming in from the CDS as well. Hopefully they can get there in time. That is another power. Missiles coming in as well. Don't know if they're going to quite make it, especially with the, the defense that Supernova has ended up setting up. And so, yeah, but 29 remaining is we haven't even seen two minutes pass, and so that's a really good place to be. A little splash ball on the conveyor belt there does get the job done for the power plant. And with all of these specials coming out, I really hope that Supernova can turn this into a push. The soda going down the mid bomb rush, and they didn't really have too many people directly behind them, so there was another pick on the mini. The mini, I think that was a triple right there, going for the quad? <laughs> wow, that that is defense if I've ever seen it. Yeah, that is definitely a hero play coming out from this mini player. I mean, seriously, that was just textbook. I mean, they really it, uh, they really gave that player the opportunity to kind of mow down three people. And now, I mean, look at that. They're set up, getting really close to their basket, just trying to make a power plan right now. Uh, now, I will say the Supernova has done very well with their defenses on this map. Uh, I think it's probably been their best so far. I mean, they've been able to stop at least and two of the three uh, pushes that have happened so far. Uh, and uh, man, right now, they're just playing it slow, trying to get picks in, moving to the basket. They're doing their best, but this mini is a menace right now. They're very, very well set up being able to retreat. Uh, not the Norwegian isn't quite getting to the basket, especially with their KDL down, but they're stalling out, and that is what matters because every second that ticks away, they are comfortably in the lead right now. Every second that they spend harassing Supernova means that Supernova can focus on collecting plans, getting picks, doing what they need to do to get to the basket. And this try is doing what tries do best. Gonna go down in a tray, but that is a lot of people down. I think that was a white light just for a second there on Norwegian. And so we have one power clam going in. The second is making its way, gonna go in as well. A few more clams. We have a burst bomb rush that is coming out right there. Really nice pick. But that's three down almost immediately. So 50% Norwegian is just gonna swoop in and get that cleanup very, very quickly. This has been an absolute bloodbath game. It's from you know, three down to wipe to three down to wipe on both sides. Uh, but now the nice thing is getting those two power plans and is it going to make it a little easier for Supernova? You know, Ooh, that, that man, put it, and you know, as I say that, man, Supernova gets the, oh, I think that's delayed wipe. You know, they are closer. I think if they get the clam economy going on on their side, they could actually get this to a, a close lead or maybe even like getting past there and actually taking the lead for this game. So again, not, not definitely not out on this game three for Supernova. Those, the, the, those burst bomb snipes were really, really nice. And they, they are fully in control of this area under the basket, but they don't quite have a clan yet. They're throwing clans, trying to make it. Splatoon goes down with the power, and so this Pedro doing their best to get it. And just like that, an opportunity slips through their fingers.
fingers, they had it, but unfortunately the lack of a power at the first use of the carrier going down means that they couldn't really do anything with that, and those people going down means that Norwegian is going to take advantage of that. Take a lot of control of the squash, very much set up with all the rolls does go down. Oh, this pro, against all odds, is going to take those picks there, make a power clamp, and hopefully with the backup of Splats with there, can try and get into this basket with uh, just less than 30 seconds. Yeah, you know, and uh, I'm actually very surprised that uh, Supernova was able to get the plan as fast as they did, so hats off to them, because I wasn't sure. I think they used their pity plan for the last two power plant push there. So I think we're seeing uh, what could be a potential for the Supernova to score, maybe take the lead, but they do, man, the, squid, the Splash Squid really needs to find this pick, and they do with the burst bomb snap, man. These people are in the training room with their burst bomb right now. I and like that, it's working out. With the open the basket with five claims of their name, uh, although right after that they get picked, oh, and that's full life in overtime. That is so unfortunate for them, man, Supernova. Yeah, the missiles, the picks, unfortunately, it just all adds up like that. They did manage to get a couple more clams and take it down to 40, just uh, close to that lead, but unfortunately not quite getting it. So that set is going to end 3-0 in favor of Norwegian, but they definitely put up a fight. I mean, we saw the, how back and forth that game was with the, like you said, three down to a white, three down to a white. It felt like that was happening. And look at those sky-high KAs. This game was a bloodbath, 18 and 17 being the highest on either team. Yeah, and again, really good showing from Supernova in the last game. It finally felt like they found their footing, especially with some of those good defenses. Uh, the offense wasn't entirely there for them, but really, really good showing for them. I, I really like that from that uh, for Supernova for that for that game. Absolutely. All right. We'll take a break of just a couple of minutes before we come back with our second round of our group stage. So do stay tuned. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. I'm going nowhere. Bye bye.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Launch Point Draft Cup number nine. We are back with groups play all three. We are in the second round. I'm gonna watch No Maidens in this economy versus Bricks and Rainbows. If you're just joining us, I'm Kater and I'm joined here today by OBT. Hey, how's it going, y'all? All right. Well, we certainly have um, some <laughs> really interesting team names that we're seeing on stream, but. I think that's one of the fun parts about LPDC. You, you, you tend to see names like this. It is great. I mean, that's like, I think, half the fun of any pick of like Draft Cup tournament is picking your team name. It's like, you know, you mm -hmm. meet the people, you get in VC, you're like, oh, how about this name? I was like, yeah, let's go with that name. So, I mean, I don't <laughs> know, maybe there's some Elden Ring players on Alpha Team there, but I, I think they're pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, also their in-game names, which we will be using, we have uh, No Maidens and The Economy, so... <laughs> True to their name, maybe there are no maidens in the economy. Um, I, I, unfortunately, I don't, well, let's see. We weren't, we aren't going to be seeing uh, clan blitz in this round, so I can't make a clan economy joke, unfortunately. But, uh, <laughs> I oh, know, well. so unfortunate. Yeah, I got to make plenty of them uh, yesterday during minnow clams when we also, I mean, this might even be the same person. I think we had somebody called the economy on stream and Quark and I just made a bunch of economy jokes. It was great. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I recognize again some of these people, of course, uh, Miss Popgun. You gotta recognize that name. Cast the Fae, uh, Nino, you were talking about earlier. It's the same Nino. Uh, so maybe we'll see uh, some, some faces that we recognize here. But we're gonna jump right into our first game, which is Tower Control on Starfish Main Stage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, classic bona fide Tower Control map, very popular with the comp scene. Uh, it's taken a while. Oh, that's a little scary. Let's see All if right. everyone made it. Everybody oh, good. Made it. Yeah. You know, you see that, that long intro and you're like, oh, oh. And we do have a Sploosh 7 actually coming out from Bricks and Rainbows. So this is something, maybe not necessarily in Tower, because we expect to see that many on Rainmaker usually. But hey, that's definitely fair. And then we have um, relatively short range shooter comp on the side of No Maidens with uh, that watch I think being maybe the longest range one but hey it could definitely work out they've just definitely got to watch out for that CDS because that CDS has got range on them but they're getting there they take down the CDS he's absolutely the only one alive so that's a very nice three down to start off uh, No Maidens going to get to this first checkpoint and if it can keep itself hopefully it'll just take that first checkpoint with very little resistance. Very unfortunate that Miss Popcorn, I've been there with where you try to throw the bomb and it doesn't land anywhere where you want it to go. So, mm -hmm, very yeah. unfortunate when that happens. But hey, I, I, that first checkpoint gonna fall very early to the No Maidens team. Uh, you know, it is, it's interesting you see that, uh, that both teams kind of have like one only range option. And what the hammer kill gonna get them all on the wall? That's crazy. Yeah, Stamp is Stamp's out of a hit or miss that. You know, sometimes you get canceled immediately, sometimes you get picks like that. But it's working out so far for that sploosh. The tower's gonna make its way back to mid. And we just got that fight going on in mid. Bricks and Rainbows uh, generally out of control. But they still gotta fight off No Maidens. Oh, that is a pick. I That splash came out of uh, somewhere. It takes another person down while they go down as well. And here's another hammer coming out from Tar the Star as well. Did it not quite get the snipe? Uh, but that's all right. We do have that coming from both Bricks and Rainbows now. So it's their turn to bring that forward. Really nice picking up. And then Tom on this blue seven, kind of being a menace right now. In this game. You know, I mean, this is probably like what the third hammer they have online. As I see that, they go down, unfortunately. Uh, you know, now we're gonna see if uh, no mains can get this uh, kind of defense going for checkpoint number one. Uh, you do see the, the people have one down, and I think that's gonna be it because that's basically a delayed life on the side. Um, uh, oh my gosh, I just forgot the name. <laughs> Bricks and rainbows, there we go. Yeah, the economy uh, coming in there with a really nice off angle slosher pick. If someone's even just dive down and get that. We've also got the reverse bombs coming out from the missiles as well. So they're uh, slowly going to be making their way. And there is the hammer. <laughs> Terrifying sight, but the hammer does immediately cancel by snow there. So really, really nice. We've got the bomb rush coming out as well. Going to take a lot of these higher up areas as well as pitch down there. Super, super nice. And snow is just full on the aggressive right now, along with it being with the economy. I mean, this is, is this just spawn camping at this point. Like. <laughs> this is, they're not even halfway, they're, they're just barely halfway through, but I mean, they, they miss somebody truly because this CDS is, is taking control. Uh, you saw Snow was on a rampage there with their teammate, but I mean, someone was able to slip by and get to the tower. So, I mean, they only actually put two more points on the board. Very unfortunate for No Maiden. Very fortunate, again, for uh, Bricks and Rainbows there. They were able to stop that push. Now, uh, th uh, this first, the second checkpoint might fall still. Oh, never mind. As I say that, they're able to get the defense 
off and stop it just barely. Great defense coming out from Bricks and Rainbow. I mean, that was a crazy situation. They were in their base, and again, only were able to put a few points on the board for them. Really good stuff. Yep, yeah. Sometimes you look so far forward that unfortunately the objective is not moving forward and something like that happens to get a little bit of tunnel vision, but that's okay, it happens to the best of us. Because they did get down to 36, which is a pretty nice place to be, especially when you've got a minute and 30 remaining. We do have missiles coming out, and that CDS has storm at the ready as well. We have the armor getting popped, so this all leads up to a hopefully it wasn't a good push. Uh, oh, they're running in circles, spinning in circles, trying to get that slaughter though. And just like that, that is another three down, and no maidens is going to very quickly take control of that. So, I mean, that could have been something really good, but all, unfortunately, all the picks adding up, it just it happens like that sometimes. Yeah, you know, it's all about maximizing your, your uh, opportunities in this game. And I feel like every time that uh, Bricks and Rainbows have tried to get set up, they've been shut down very quickly by the economy. And, you know, I mean, right now, I mean, they could opt to push there. Oh, there's a DC! And I think Ooh. this is going to be past the DC rules, because, I mean, we're well into yeah. the game and we're past 50. So the economy is going to have to play it out. I hope that they are able to hold on to their lead. Very, very unfortunate it's happening this late game. Yeah, I mean, they have the lead with the, the loss of that splash. I mean, you can, you can see the splash had 17k. They, they were putting in so much work. So the loss of that is likely going to hurt. Um, and, you know, constantly being down a person. This That hammer, I think, also got the pick. We finally see the storm coming out as well. That checkpoint, they are chilling out on it. It's going to fall very, very quickly. So really, they have just the, the second checkpoint to work with. And although they are on the defense, which makes it a little bit easier when you have everybody here, all four players on it, it's a bit more difficult. But we have the suction bombs coming out. We have the pick. The economy goes down. That is a full wipe with 10 seconds remaining. So with a player down, no maidens is able to make it work. Uh, crackdown on the defense. Just three points away from losing that lead, and they make it work. I mean, I, I, you were talking about, man, it's going to be tough without the splash, but clearly everyone else on the team able to pony up and stay oh, yeah, alive for that what, defense. It, it, it might, they might have felt the loss, but still, I mean, that slosher definitely stepped up to fill the, the, the hyper aggression that that splash was putting in. <laughs> and, oh, man, you can see all those KAs. Uh, C plus, I don't know about that, man. I, uh, you know, uh, maybe it's like their second account and I want to play ranked. <laughs> I mean, I but, know, you know somebody I, that like purposely kept like D ranked all the way to C minus just for the funnies. <laughs> I mean, that, uh, it's always interesting when you get that, but I'm just saying theoretically, if, even if they are C plus, it just goes to show, you know, you don't need to be X ranked to play competitive Splatoon. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it depends on if it's true or not. I don't, I don't know if it's true, but of course you do not need to to have X rank to play comp. I mean, I started out as as S. I know people that have started out in A or B, so it's not so bad. You just gotta find the people that are that are willing to help you make it up. But I don't. I, I think that's just. I think that's just a funny rank. I don't. I don't think that's actually a C Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I if anyone's out in the audience being like, oh man, I wish I was playing launch board right now. I say, you know, uh, next time, whenever there's uh, another pickup tournament like this, is put your name out there, put your foot in the water. You know, it's never too late or too early to get into some competitive Splatoon. I know a lot of people are like, I'm going to wait till Splatoon 3. But, like, you know, that's, I mean, it's not going to come out for, like, another, like, uh, two, three months. So you got a lot mm -hmm. of time. You can learn a lot of stuff, meet a lot of good people. And I say, you know, it's it's any time. You can start on, like, a Tuesday. It doesn't matter. Always see if you can try to get into it if you're at all interested. There's some really great people. Really, really nice. Always uplifting. That's the one thing I love about the Splatoon community. Coming from someone that's a little more newer. is that I mean, I can't think of almost a single person that's turned down to help someone else that's trying to learn the game. You know, Cater? Yeah, I mean, one of, I, I used to play in LPDC just a little bit, and I wasn't that into comp, but it was still really cool to have a draft cup resource like this, because it's a little bit different from the, the other tournaments that you see around. This is kind of a, a different experience going in on your own and finding new people, or maybe people you know, and getting to play with them, getting to play a tournament through with them, figuring each other out. And we, we talked about it a little bit before, but maybe you have synergy, maybe you develop it throughout the tournament. Either way, it ends up being really, really cool and a really cool experience. Uh, I've played in some draft cups myself, and it's just, it's really nice getting to meet new people, getting to grow with them. Uh, for our second match, uh, yes, second? <laughs> I'm losing count yes. here, it is our second yes. match. I can't count. Uh, we're going to Splat Zones on Wahoo World. So this one, the this, this Zones, I do probably going to see, we're probably going to see that CDS again. I would not be surprised mm -hmm. to see the Splash as well, given how much turf control Splash can put down and the aggression that they were putting out with that weapon. Um, as long as, I, I really do hope that they, that was just a one-time thing and we're not seeing internet issues here. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, with the the quad, I mean, I guess almost the uh, the octet of shooters that we had in this lobby, I would not mm -hmm. be surprised if someone pulled out something with a Booyah bomb like you know K Pro or even especially K fifty two because Booyah yeah. is just so such a good uh, capping weapon for this you know bomb Booyah size circular zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's almost as if the, the special was made for the zone. It's right there. As long as people don't, you know, aggressively paint over it, you can at least neutralize the zone a lot of the time. I mean, Splashdown, of course, also a circular special, but we all know how we all know about Splashdown, how easily it can get canceled at some point. So it, it's difficult to make work. But you can just toss onto the zone and then follow up with a bunch of, of people going onto the zone. Well, you know, I think these are some quirky individuals. We'll probably see another quirky comp coming out from both sides. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, it's a little scrappier with the sh a lot of short range coming out from both yeah. teams again. I I would be uh, I guess I would I guess I wouldn't be shocked, but I would be it'd be interesting to see like a backliner or midliner coming out from each team. So uh, you know, mm -hmm. whatever happens, man, it's launch point. <laughs> yeah, the pro definitely could come out. Uh, like you said, K pro sometimes see pulled out here. Uh, sometimes you see something like uh, V Jet pulled out just for the range, a little bit, a little bit more of that. But uh, we probably won't see that given both how both of these teams are playing fast, playing short range. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you'll see your you know your shot, your zap. So uh, no, no, not probably not too many surprises here. I do wonder if we'll see the the soda come back because the soda did pull off. Uh, we did see the soda, didn't we? Am I? I don't yes. Know, I'm not yes. Inclusive. You're not yeah. crazy, I promise. Yeah. Okay. I was like, am I mixing it up with the previous set? But yeah, that soda can definitely work out here. I used to play it here, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, plus, those burst bombs are really, really nice for uh, helping cap the zone. Also, I think just being a burst bomb menace, like we kind of saw in the in the previous set, man. I mean, some people yeah. are just so trained with those. But as I say that, we're gonna get into again splat zones, Wahoo, another bona fide toner tournament pick. Uh, it's really interesting with this map because there's so many ways to get into the zone. Uh, and I, I'm curious to see what he's decides to pull out. Yeah, I mean, Wahoo Zone is an LPDC classic, so we'll love to see it. <laughs> we'll probably see it again at some point. All right. Woo, we do oh, have the gem. Wow. We got a tent coming out as well, and a splatter scope and a nozzle nose. So that's the L3D there. A little bit more common one there on the nozzle nose's family. You'll be seeing that inkjet come out from them. The fire fin scope. It's a weapon I have not seen in a while. To be honest, I haven't seen a charger in a very, very good long while. So I'm excited to see how this plays out. And the tent, of course, that tent shield going onto the zone. It's gonna leave a massive trail in its wake. And you can see already the anchors are, are, are battling it out. This charger has targeted the jet and knows exactly where they are. And, ooh, I, I, it was that, I think that was a collateral. That was so, so nice. This charger player knows what they are doing. The scope working out for them as well. And so it means that their team is going to be able to take that first pick of the zone right there. The inkjet coming out as well is going to target that 10th player. And they are now comfortably in control here. Nice, nice, nice pick. It does result in them falling down. So they're going to have to use that while they're going to back off just a little bit. Now when this goes down as well. But they're almost at that group. Yeah, that, that, sorry, that uh, bomb right there. And that was a really, really nice storm coming out as well. A lot of people in this yeah, uh, you saw that in that charging player clearly very confident in their skill of being able to push up that bar saying, you know, I am the superior backline because I can shoot two people at once. Uh, as I say that though, I mean, uh, finally, uh, the, the, uh, the main team is going to be able to take that zone. Uh, you see here, I'm pretty sure this is Scrub now because I know Scrub plays for some nation factors more at some point they do the game base. And there are really good menace with that tent player. But as I say, that star of the star, <laughs> clearly the star of this game, gonna get another easy two picks there, able to allow their team to push up his own with his bomb rush. Make that three picks. Are they going to get spawn? Yeah, I mean that jump, that jump camp with the charger. What a great way to finish off the slew of kills that they are just putting out here. I mean, a lot of jumps coming in. We have the inkjet as well. I think somebody just ate the inkjet shot right there. Another snipe coming up from the car, getting shot down by snow there. Finally, their brain getting put to an end. So no maidens finally working through that penalty, getting a little bit more comfortable control of the zone. And I mean, yeah, you see snow is gonna go up, gonna uh, probably pop that bomber when they're in a really good position here. And oh, the charger! You can. See the charger knows what's up. They gotta run away from snow, but they're just not quite fast enough. Uh, and we do have a lot of nice control here. And if you go for the inkjet, it's not quite getting a pick on that snow. And they, oh, they don't get the pick. That's unfortunate. Um, and uh, during that, the zone had flipped back two bricks and rainbows. So a little bit more attempted to get on the inkjets. Yeah, you saw, I mean, Snow went on a tear there, but unfortunately, they still were not able to get the lead for as long as they had that zone control. You can kind of see the dangers of trying to push up that far without making sure that the area in front of the zone is clear. Uh, but, I mean, uh, Bricks Rainbow's gonna go three down. Uh, right now, the economy's chasing down the city. <laughs> yes! 
Yeah, that you saw that bomb rush come on earlier. Yeah. Because I didn't realize this was relative. I didn't realize this is curly rush. And you can see now we have everybody coming up. And this is what you love to see. This is the zone lockout. Getting all of these picks, doing your best right here. Oh, the double shot from the economy on the tent. And now we have that penalty is gone. That was a wipe. That's another wipe. The, the, the charger going down there is the lead. And, and all of these curling bombs going out means that there is no way to drop down onto this zone. Onto this, not this zone, because this little portion here. you got to take a hit from three, otherwise you're just going to get run over. And that is what's happening right now. So, I mean, very, very impressive turnaround. We do finally see somebody breaking out, but not for long. They do get taken out, and that is the game. That is how you turn around a Splatsouts game. I mean, that was a very aggressive lockout with the double bomb rush plus the tan on, on right next to the drop. Uh, and even though that you saw that they came back in with armor, which was smart, it just was not enough to break that lockout. And even with the huge 10k coming out from Tar, the star of that game, I feel like it was not enough to get them the victory there. So, I mean, I think at this point it's going to be 2-0 for uh the maintenance team but again you know not over yet they still have a game to try to see if they can take one mm -hmm. yeah though i mean that charger gameplay even, <laughs> even though it wasn't quite enough still chef's kiss it's been so long since i've seen a charger and, and you love to see it it's, it's so refreshing to see great gameplay like that all right to finish off this set we're going to rainmaker on humpback pump track so uh, bring out your sloshers, bring out your sploosh sevens. This is where uh, we're probably going to see the return of the sploosh seven, all that hammer coming out as well, you know? Yeah, this is, a, again, really good map for uh, specifically the Sploosh 7. I mean, if you get the Rainmaker pop, get the hammer in front of you, it's really easy to get to the podium. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think they're going to see, you know, my favorite weapon, the Dynamo Roller, on this map, even though this oh, is Nogami's yeah. gift to the Dynamo Roller. But, uh, you know, I know that's just big dream. There's not very many us around anymore, but... It should be at least probably a pretty fast-paced Rainmaker game based on the comps the team have ran in the past. Yeah, this one, like you said, it can if you get something in front of you, it can be relatively easy to get to the, the basket because once you get around that bend, it's just a path if you take that right side. So we can get really, really high scoring if you play on this map. Other than that, I don't expect we'll be seeing too many things. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit harder to play Charger on here just because the way the map is shaped, you don't get as many sight lines. I mean... I play, so that's why I tend to play Splatling Jet here, I mean, and, and still, even though I still struggle with those sight lines, just because of the, the way the map is shaped, they're, all of these weapons just cause hide in the curves and I can't see them anymore, you know? Yeah, it's a very hilly map, it really works well for weapons with good fall off, like rollers and slashes, so I, I can see that being hard for that line. I'm curious to see, honestly, I mean, that totally last game threw me for a loop to see if there's any uh, backliners, but man, we're getting the scary intro again, okay, I think, I think everyone made it. All right. Oh, and even my words, Nino pulling out the Flingza, and that's going to be out yeah, the four Flingza with the nice build on that. Uh, it's going to be it's who can get to the Rainmaker first. That I think everyone has, uh, most people have a bomb with this. It's going to go down to the economy. That was near instant. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I thought that was a pop pick with how, how, how close it was in track here. Absolutely going for it. I mean, oh, and Miss Popkin was able to pick up that Rainmaker, so they are just running for it. And it just go right around the dually sculptures. Um, get that down to 37, very quickly before 37, not a safe lead. You can see how fast that is. I do want to note the A Junior as well. So likely they picked up for, the, the torpedoes are going to be nice, but Min is uh, probably the bubbles here, I think. So um, those bubbles are going to be really nice to take some damage, especially when you can get to the podium, as long as they can get in position to pop, to so put those down. And right now they're in a little bit of trouble catching. They're doing their best. A lot of movement here, but they got single target as well. And he does manage to take down someone on their way out. Now we have the ringer being to pick up again. Charlie's starting a little bit of trouble there, unfortunately going down with those bubbles on line. And uh, we just got no man going on on the ramp here. Here is the hammer. Does he cancel before it can find the pick, though? Really scary for the team for a second when I saw the hammer get the pick on there. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's just been a really fast uh, pace game or anything so far, given the um, And also, I just want to give a quick shout out to Far the Star. I mean, they're clearly a very gifted flex player, very good play. Uh, you Kane Jr. and a really, really strong scope charger in the same match. So I am hands off to them. Although, as you see, oh, oh, no. I was about to say that they are getting close to lead. Close, but no cigar. They still do have a couple of back on, but as I say that, Nino's going to be the last up for uh, Rainbow. So very unfortunate yeah. they're not able to get the lead. The one point has a 
Uh, I, yeah, I was gonna say, you saw, I saw the hammer out of the corner of the street just just be activated and, and come swinging down to that Raymaker, crushing them and crushing the dreams of the unfortunately. I mean, of course, it is the one point we know we can get there, and lots and lots of people just going down. You got the uh, smoke here on the Splinter 7, the only one left alive, doing their best to keep that Raymaker shield orange. Unfortunately, does, unfortunately does go down. So we do have Bricks and Rainbows a little bit more control here, trying to get that mid. Um, you know, going to pick up those missiles, which is nice. Gets a kick as well, so super, super good. That's a nice little bonus there. Got to watch the bomb, but with rainbows, you're going to try and get another group. Really hard when you have missiles here. So you got to watch them and get the rainbows and another group somewhere. Advancing forward there for me, I was about to compliment that, but really just great time missiles coming out from... Uh, uh, the, the pop comes team because, I mean, you saw, I mean, it's such an easy catch point. I mean, as soon as you get to the elbow, I feel like you see stuff like, you know, Ray and missiles come out because people are so close together and they have to get through that spot. Unfortunately, though, uh, for the purpose of the team, looking like they're going to go down, I think they're, they're, they're going to be able to extend this lead, though. Yeah, Miss Pop Gun on the Raymaker. Really, really nice work there. That's the three down the, the, the ooh, ooh, almost with the missiles and, and, and the torpedo and everything are gonna take down that Raymaker just at the pedestal. So almost, 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 but not quite the KO. And of course, this does mean that Bricks and Rainbows now has to KO if they want to win this match. So that is a high, high, high bar, but at least they still have a chance that KO did not go through. Yeah, I mean, great stuff for the stop. I was getting a little concerned when I saw everything on the pedestal. I was like, I don't know if they're going to be able to dunk it. Uh, but it's not, I mean, it honestly may not matter with it. Right now, I mean, that's a full wipe from the side of Bricks and Rainbow. Not what you want to no. see when you have a minute 22. Remember, they are still not out of this. They do have a chance that they can even get close to the Rainmaker now. The, but they the are going to have to stop this again. <laughs> wow, that hammer is all the way up there. <laughs> they probably used the pedestal to jump up there. They were at it just right there. They did get canceled, but still. I mean, imagine exiting your spot and you immediately see a hammer. Like, that's got to be terrifying. Uh, Star there, gonna, gonna camp the, the jump, has, has the bubbles. Oh, narrowly misses the jump out, unfortunate. But that does mean that they get a little bit more control, a little bit more rain over mid. I, I was gonna say, where is the Rainmaker? It did get reset, so it's now back in mid. Oh, the suction bombs, those have a massive uh, radius of explosion, unfortunately. But, oh, we do get picks down, two down now, and that, that Rainmaker, really nice pick, gonna try and get Snow uh, a member there to back them up, but we have everything on them, the, the bombs, the missiles, I don't know if they're going to be able to get through this, they have their friends behind them, but we only have 26 seconds left and there's just so many bombs getting thrown that people are having to go down because they have to run forward, but it seems like every time that they try to, there's just another bomb and this Raymaker is just really stuck. Shout out to Kraft, I mean, the great awareness to get the flank on them. Also, just, I mean, I, I, they stayed alive for just so long, but you're really seeing the difference of a bomb, of a bomb-heavy team from the side of uh, No Maidens versus something like Bricks and Rainbows, where it's just like, I mean, it makes such a huge difference because they're able to occupy that space. And as that, I say that No Maidens going to take it with a clean 3-0. Uh, very, very, very funny game up until the very end. I thought that both teams were evenly matched, but man, that, just that one push where they almost got the KO kind of sealed the deal there. Mm, yeah, I mean, Rainmaker, all you need is just that one opportunity, that one great big push, and it works out. And we, again, we're seeing those really high KAs. Super nice job from both of these teams. They definitely put on a show. I mean, that was a pretty interesting game, especially mm -hmm. the, the combine that with the, the Wahoo game. And I, I thought that was a great set. Again, really cool thing with a launch point draft cup when you see these really cool sets come together. And I think with that, we're probably going to take another break, but uh, don't go nowhere. Yeah, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with our third round.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Launch Point Draft Cup number nine. We are back with the third and final round of groups. Remember that this is play all three. Um, uh, if you're just joining us, I'm Cater, and I'm joined here today by OBG. What's going on, y'all? All right. So for this last round of groups, we're going to be seeing Splat Bomb Propaganda versus I'm on a team. And we were talking about names earlier, but uh, this name, I'm on a team, actually has a little bit of backstory to it. So yeah, at first you might think, you know, you know, I'm on a team. Well, you certainly are. But we have a little, you know, we have a form that you got to fill out when you register for Launch Point Draft Cup so we get to know a bit more about you. We can put you with people that you would be good with. We can seed y'all. And um, one of the questions is, are you on a team? Have you been on a team? If so, which team? And one of these members just put, I'm on a team. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why this team is now called I'm on a team. So I think I think that's great. I mean, we love the stories, the laughs that come out of LPDC. So so good for them. I mean, they most certainly are on a team. That much has been apparent. We're going to jump right into our first match that's going to be Clams on Ink Blot Art Academy. So what are we seeing? We'll be seeing Clams again. And this one, uh, you you know that step that everybody likes to to, to be sneaky on and throw the clam in? Yeah. If you if you put down mist, you cannot do it. I mean, we're not seeing mist here. I just think that's a little funny. Uh, it's a little funny tidbit because um, you cannot jump when you're in mist pretty much. So you can't jump. You can't throw the clam in. That's a little thing to keep in mind. But yeah, look at the looking at the uh, the weapons that we do have. We've got the ink brush going in. So that's going to be a fast one. It does go down, unfortunately, but we'll probably be seeing a lot of them later on in this match. We got the flingsa. We got your juniors. Everything else is pretty much run of the mill. Yeah, and as you see, the junior does jump out. Uh, now, the challenging thing with that is it's always better to jump to your teammate, but I get why they were doing that. You got to save the armor, and especially for doing the defense. But, I mean, as I say, the defense is happening. That's full white coming from the side of uh, I'm on a team. I'm sorry. I'm not on I'm on a team. Uh, oh, uh, the other ones. Uh, oh, Splat Von Propaganda. Sorry, it's hard to remember the names. Are you saying you're not on a team? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Inkbrush Nouveau gonna come in here with the baller trying to bait it into- They're trying to bait it into being, uh, being broken. Almost got there, but not quite. Still, though, gonna avoid the flings. A really nice wall placement, and that is a lot of picks. Still the three down. That's delayed wipe right there. And they've got a lot of clams under it, too. Getting it down to 33 already and counting. We got some more clam picks going down as well. The gal going down, though. Uh, and very, very quickly, Splat on Propaganda is gonna pick that back up and get, uh, some, some really nice control over the, the basket as well. So, but we did get all the way to 27 which is very impressive for that opening push they were able to come clean that up eventually talking about map knowledge again that team did the funny haha -ha from the steps the little baby claim on there it's yep. always funny talking to the experienced players because they know those little tiny baby areas uh where they can throw the clams on and speaking of clams uh man i'm on a team really got the firm control of the clam economy with 16 even with two members alive which means they must have eight each so i mean that's good that they're not making the power clam i know a lot of teams will blow their cover by doing that and then you see, even with them having two alive only, they were able to keep their claims for this next push. And as Ooh. I say, the commentators perished the first one eight claims go down. So my apologies if you're watching this vod back later. I want to see that. That was totally my fault. Yeah, but the, that that person that killed him gonna go right back and gonna get picked by that ink brush nouveau, uh, running around at the speed of sound on that <laughs> map, gonna immediately get crushed by that that roller though, just coming in and saying, you know, I'm the superior roller class because technically brushes are rollers. Did you know that they're classified as rollers by the game, uh, which is kind of weird. But anyways, uh, we have a lot lot of control uh, coming in here. And from a splat bomb propaganda, they have that. Uh, they have the. Ooh, that was a nice pick. They have the the power clam. They're gonna go down. Ooh, but they do still get the clam in. Uh, unfortunately, though, with the pro, the only one alive, they're not gonna get any follow up in that. Uh, still, though, I don't really know how they managed to slip that clam in. But hey, it works out. Seeing the the flings of players with some fancy footsteps, you do have to have a little bit of the extreme knowledge to play that as a flings of player myself <laughs> because you just move so dang slow. But unfortunately, that is going to give the uh, I'm on a team another pity clam to work with, so that they're able to get this in. Although, uh, as I say that, the, they are going to go down to just as all the junior players. So they're going to wisely back up, and Airsign's going to pick up this power clam, showing that Airsign. Yeah, uh, you know, we were talking. It's definitely a staple name for Launch Point. I mean, they are a mm -hmm. bona fide support player. Really been doing this a lot. And then sh Shutter with their knowledge is instantly picking up that pity clam. And now they have armor yeah. and missiles on deck for this next push. See if they can make something happen. 
Yeah, unfortunately, two members gonna go down. Airzone going down as well. That is rough. I mean, they definitely had the potential to make something happen, but uh, it, it just did not quite work out for them. Inkbrush gonna run around, pick up all of these clams, and immediately going up on this step, gonna throw that in as well. We have the smaller clams. Uh, we have the missiles coming out as well. Don't know if they're going to be able to go close enough. And there, they're probably throwing it in from the step. There yeah, it is. Yep. There's the KO. Yep, all all of those clamps just going to go in all at once. Yeah, and kind of a typical theme of the day is that, you know, uh, the I'm on a team was just able to capitalize more on their openings. And just unfortunate for Splat Prompt Propaganda, they were not able to get anything started both times they opened the basket. So I, I, let's see if they can make some adjustments uh, for this next game. But I, I definitely not a fighting stretch. Oh yeah, yeah. They they definitely had they had the setups, but unfortunately, the 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 fights that they were taking, they just could not quite get the the, the win in, and so them going down meant that the the setup that they had just could not come to fruition, unfortunately. But we'll be going on to Splat Zones on Skipper Villian. Definitely plays differently than Clan Blitz, of course. I mean, we saw those decisive lockouts that we had earlier on in in, in the previous sets as well, so we could be seeing something like that. Skipper Zones a little bit different. Because uh, the the symmetry is is on a different line than than usual, as as teams are. So you'll be coming in from two different directions. Of course, you've got the chance to come in from bottom or from top as well, which can lead to some really interesting plays depending on whether you decide to split up or put all your forces into one direction. Okay, to that begs the obvious question: What is your opening for Skipper Pavilion Spy Zones? So you, I've seen people do like two on two, two bottom, two top. You know, one on bottom, three on top. What what do you normally do? Um, it's been a really long time, but I do remember, I think we, I, because I tend to play like something like a splatling on this map, uh, if we knew that I would tend to go bottom with another one of our frontline players and our support and our other aggressive player would go from top. So yeah, we, we tended to do the 2-2 two -two split and it worked out relatively well for us. I mean, cause I just had a lot of sight lines that I could exploit on the bottom half, but I've seen 3-1. I've seen everybody throw all the resources onto bottom, which tends, sometimes, uh, tends to happen a lot just cause it's, you know, it's the, a little bit more of the, um, the, the path that you tend to immediately see when you take but top can be definitely be valuable you just have to be careful when you're dropping down because there could be somebody lying in wait for you yeah and i i kind of figured yeah you're gonna see right on flex down that that roller that is definitely something that can shark those top openings i know i love to do it as a roller player myself and uh, you know i think that flings is really a versatile weapon and it was just so oh, yeah. funny because i mean before missiles were good i'm pretty sure no one used it but i think yeah. it's arguably one of the, the better rollers in the class right now uh, but Absolutely. we are, are going to see uh, most of them start on bottom. Early missiles are going to kind of force the scene to back up. Hopefully no one gets picked off. And as I say, that air sign goes down. So now it's going to be just right on flexing if they can win this uh, 1v2. And uh, unfortunately, that's looking like it could be a full wipe on the side of, uh, of Splat Bomb Supremacy. Or Propaganda, sorry. Splat Bomb Supremacy, Splat Bomb Propaganda. That, it, gets the, it gets the idea across. This K-Pro going to survive long enough to throw out that Booyah Bomb, clear some people off the zone. Doesn't quite get the paint down that they probably wanted, but what matters is that they've got their junior player back. They've got the armor now. They can go out with those bombs, the support behind them. Two picks, very, very nice, meaning that they can start concentrating on the zone with the rest of their team now. Fortunately, uh, Air Silent Jr. did go down in the process, but they'll be back. And meanwhile, uh, Splat Bomb Propaganda... Uh, does uh, end up getting does is able to get the the cap on that zone apply the penalty which is really really nice so they'll they'll be comfortable in that try does go down on top here so they're gonna have to watch out for that we have the booyah bomb as well uh, we're gonna try and take out the K shot that's coming into zone right now yeah I know and the only downside of running uh, K pro I think that's why I kind of fell out of favor is that it's just really hard for them to paint I mean they're great <laughs> when they get the kills and everything you can paint with their blood Ooh. or sorry the splats <laughs> but, uh, I feel like by and large it's just very hard to have a successful weapon that relies on almost the entirety of this other team to paint so i mean you kind yeah. of saw that with them defending bottom they weren't able to hold the zone there but i mean they're right back in it with splat bomb propaganda not supremacy uh being able to hold this and getting close to the lead there and uh, the, uh, now the, the secret for this map is you really have to control top i feel like a lot of people's pushes go down because the team is able to come in like you see right now uh with armor with their special from top and it's just very very hard to hold this weird angle uh but Oh, and the one point me. Very unfortunate for Splat Bomb Top again. They were not able to get the lead. Now they have, again, a 30 point penalty to chew through. And you see the statue fight going to work out for at least one member to get the splat. Yeah, I mean, we've got them. They're trying to get back in. A little bit trapped up here. They have that armor. And of course, the, the Booyah Bomb going to come out probably pretty soon here now that they have it at the ready. And they got to get that zone soon. They neutralize it, going for the pick, get the cap as well. So uh, I was going to say that penalty was about to run out. K-Pro very nicely getting that pick. I mean, you were talking about K-Pro, and, and it hurts when it's not 
able to paint as much a little bit earlier. And I honestly, that's probably why we see you saw KDL just start booming in popularity after the paint buff, just because that was so important to the weapon. And now that it could put that down, it has the damage, it has the specials, it has a great kit. But still, I mean, this Gaper player is definitely making it work, taking advantage of their range and their really high damage. So it's working out. And now that they've gotten that lead, they can rest a little bit easier, uh, especially with that Booyah Bomb going onto the side of the zone there. Unfortunately, they do get taken off, and so that is going to be a three-down situation. But still, we've got Air Sign getting those picks, probably with the bombs there. That's the junior play. Yeah, and you know, uh, I was going to say, it was, it was the, the other, they got the other support play with the bomb. You see the junior players known for uh, their bomb splash there, because it's just such a good weapon to get the double bomb on there. And it's just, bombs are so important, I feel like, for any any kind of match here, especially right mm -hmm. now. I'm really doing a good job of controlling this top mid area where they can just kind of wall people out and say, you can't be here for the next, you know, three seconds, which is scary when you're start they're starting to get close to the, the, out of their penalty. Ooh, the, yeah, the I mean, pick on the roller, though, that is really, really important. I mean, we were talking about it earlier, how important that weapon can be, but we're already seeing picks go down left and right on the zone here. Again, just the, the penalty almost, almost gone, but not quite quite uh it does get lower every time that happens though so it's only 19 right now but i mean splat splat bomb uh, propaganda is nicely in control of the zone uh right on here on the top air sign on the bottom it's working out pretty darn well for them yeah man you know it's just a uh, junior and flings can just output so much paint when they're together it's just unfortunately you know sometimes when the flings go down like that they're not gonna be able to be there to just try to you know withstand the kappa zone but i mean right now three down for the side of Splat Bomb Propaganda, this is finally the time. I think this is the first lockout we've seen where teams have been able to get past the zone, get past mid, and start moving up to see if they can just keep them away from the zone. And as I say nice. that, you know, uh, again, uh, I'm on a team going to be able to, to take that one and get the lead there. And it's getting a little dangerous. 30 seconds, 20 ticks remaining. Can Splat Bomb Propaganda get back in here and cap the zone before it's too late? Yeah, they're doing their best, but the combination of this Booyah Bomb and uh, the walls and everything is going to make it so, so, so difficult. We have a Booyah Bomb coming out, but it's, it's just a tad too late. I mean, you saw the zone neutralize at the very end there, but unfortunately, not quite enough to guarantee then. So that is going to be the KO for I'm on a team. Yeah, and I mean, a really close back and forth set. I feel like it all came down to, again, the, the, the capitalizing on that three down, which is so good in zones. So you love to see that. I mean... Uh, it's just that's what really defines what wins or loses those zones matches when you're able to, to push up past there and start getting the lockout because I mean really if they have to burn their specials to even get close to the zone it's going to be a lot easier for you to defend because you can you know, use your specials to actually keep the zone so I mean really good play from on our team but man definitely not in the slide chat for spot, the side of splat bomb propaganda absolutely I mean <laughs> the we didn't it was a really nice comeback for them if splat zones is like that it's not over till it's over mm -hmm. and you can make it work all right, for our third and final match of this set and of groups, we're going to be seeing Rainmaker on Sturgeon Shipyard. So this one, you got the little funny trick, you know, where you can jump into the void to get some more points. Um, yeah. I do wonder if we'll be seeing that roller again. It does move just a tad slower than usual for, um, for you know, Rainmaker, but it could definitely work here. You know, I, again, I a strong play, bias because I play Flingsa, and I actually do like playing Flingsa here because as, as weird as it is with the uninkables and how hard it is to move up, I feel like, man, there are just so many little baby ledges you can shock. I mean, you can go from, like, your pit by your sponge up to, like, that little street area, like elbow, and even there from above. I feel like it's actually a pretty decent map for roller play, but again, Fair strong enough. bias. But, you know, it's funny what's about Rainmaker Sturgeon is, like you said, it's just, it's a very interesting map with the with the gates because, you know, the gates allow you to get onto their snipe. They also allow you to get closer to the pedestal. And I've seen a lot of comp players complain about that, actually, because it's not the same map top to bottom. But I'm always like, man, Sturgeon, I think, is such a good map in and of its own. There's a lot of levels. I mean, I'm always a big fan of the multiple levels uh, in maps just because of the weapons I play. But also, I think it's, a, it's an interesting thing about Splatoon is that, like, you know, we're not shooting bullets and they don't, they don't have to go straight you can go and arc over things you know you can get fallout from pretty much every weapon in the game and i i just love maps with a lot of uh verticality i think you're gonna see more of that in the next game yeah fall off is wonderful especially for weapons that can really use it like you know your rollers your sloshers um and sometimes you get those splatling uh, the funny fall offs you know you have the <laughs> blasters with your area of effect that can shoot over ramps so a lot of weapons benefit from from having the arc the way that these the, the ink droplets work and it's a really cool uh really cool feature of this game like you said all right we're hopping into this third and final match um we are 0-2. I'm on a team right now, but it's definitely not been uh, completely decisive with the, how the matches are going. That's a lot of shooters. 
We're yeah. going to be seeing a lot of shooters come out from I'm on a team. The double shot comp, uh, as well as the junior and the K-Gal. So uh, pretty much everything, all your essentials there packed into one comp. Um, and then Splat Bomb, uh, Splat Bomb Propaganda going to bring out that Sploosh 7, as well as staying on that roller. So that's definitely fair. Yeah, you saw the early team fight there. Oh, why is he going to pick off? I think it was the roller play there with the use of fall, like we were talking about. And man, they are taking no prisoners. They're moving right up. Going to already be painting towards the elbow. Great blue. Yeah, see if they can clear anything out. See if they can get the Rainmaker over this really, really hard jump from schools. Uh, but as I said, you saw Ramona play. Hey, where's the Rainmaker? I wonder if they maybe missed the jump and weren't able to get across there. But uh, <laughs> you clearly confused as to why the teammates are up with him. So that's the only downside about this map, man. If you can't get the jump on the first try, it just burns so much valuable time trying to get back up there. So I wonder if that's what happened in that push. Yeah, it's it's kind of difficult to make that jump at the heat of the moment. Maybe it's a spot of ink, or you know, mist also prevents you from making the jump. Again, mist does a lot of things in Rainmaker, so sometimes you just miss it, and then, like you said, you lose that time. So 55, not so bad, but that lead could have been a lot larger. We got the stamp coming out, gets one pick, gonna rampage through mid, looking for a second. I think they have somebody in their sights. Unfortunately, not gonna quite get the pick, but they they do pick up the Rainmaker and get a, a pick with the main weapon, which does does make up for that. It looks like they're gonna make try and make this jump as well but they're getting shot at from above uh it looks like they did make that jump first try and so that means that they're able to get all the way up there i don't know if they got killed or if they tried to do the little thing where they jump into the void to get more you know i guess uh, you know put on my detective hat it looks like they probably went for it uh and it's, and it's always hard when you're running the stream just trying to capture those moments but i i feel like that they were able to get there and that's the downside on missing that jump is that I feel like it's so easy for the team to outplace you because, you know, you got to think on Rainmaker trying to get closer to the pedestal than your teammates just said. So I would make a mental note of like, okay, they got to here. We have to get past that to get the points. And it's just so easy when you don't set up a really good lead for yourself, especially with how volatile Rainmaker can be. Yeah, definitely. There's, you know, each map has their uh, places that are generally considered safe leads. And in here, you kind of have to get to uh, a, a good uh, far part, a good a good amount up that that left path before you get to really what's considered safe. Just because that's such a common way of pushing. But we got a lot, a lot of aggression coming out, honestly, from both teams here. The Sploosh going on a rampage uh, and and managing to to barely catch that Raymaker off. Also, uh, and with them getting the pick, they're going to be able to take that out of that dangerous zone that the Raymaker was taken up to. Uh, we're just under our halfway point. Here. Here. So we got uh, over two minutes left here. We have the inkjet coming out into mid looking for a pick not quite gonna get it But does put down a little bit of ink for that Raymaker who has made it back to mid and that pick <laughs> We saw the KO kind of come around dry and sneakily get that Raymaker But to no avail and now we've got a uh, painting up for another inkjet here yeah, and I mean, honestly, like you were talking about earlier, when you're in the lead like uh, Splat Bomb Propaganda is right now, you're really just using, you know, the best weapon in the game, the Rainmaker, basically. Wow, and as I say that, make it a double. You yes. see exactly why it's so good to just hold the Rainmaker and just try to get the other team to feed into you, just like uh, Splat Bomb Supremacy was, or Splat Bomb Propaganda were able to. And you saw that leading up to them getting it, pushing it to 15. So now you have 90 seconds to get it all the way out of your base to try to get it that close to 15. So, I mean, great play coming out from Splat Bomb Propaganda, showing that even though they are down to well they are definitely not out of it still got some fighting best weapon in the game indeed maybe that's it maybe that's the answer that we were all looking for i mean it does have unlimited ink uh, but yeah that was a really really great play from them i think they're able to to take out templar from uh where they were just kind of hiding out there i don't know how they managed that maybe it was an accidental pick uh, we got another inkjet coming out into pit again not quite finding anything but still puts a little bit of ink down so uh not completely wasted at all that's the cool thing about this game you, you always you're always putting down ink and that's always very important that is a full wipe also and that is the worst time to get wiped because you give up all any and all control we got the members coming back but will they come back in time we have the rainmaker just running for the pedestal i don't know if they're gonna quite make they do they take the lead we have so many picks coming out from this shot right now absolutely the mvp uh just kicking the door wide open i think they're gonna retreat just a little bit so their teammates can jump to them hopefully but man talk about a high scoring game 
Yeah, I mean, you, that was just thinking about it. I was like, man, so the only thing that this, uh, the comp lacks with range, they make up for with mobility, and that's the, the kind of the benefit of running quad shooter why it's so mad is that they're able to push up super, super fast like that shot player was. And as I say that, another shot player going to sneak up behind and get the Rainmaker pick, hopefully trying to just stall it out, making it show it so they can't even pick up the Rainmaker. But, you know, Hammer just eats right through there. So now we have an overtime situation, and they do have quite a while to go, and it's a darn shame that that Flings of Play is already down because it just means there's just less people alive, less people to guard the Rainmaker when they have to go so, 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 so far in this last, you know, overtime uh, play that they're trying to make. Difficult, difficult, difficult. They, I mean, they need to get these picks right now, and it's so, so hard when the other team has the armor, has the booyah. You have to watch out for that booyah. The Rainmaker can't risk getting trapped. Somebody's gone for it, trying to get the pick. Does go down, but they don't have much time at all. Just about halfway, 30 seconds. They are going. They're doing their best, but oh, somebody, you can see that person there, that the K-Gal managed to come back take down the Rainmaker. So, I mean, despite the, 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 the way the middle of this game was looking, that's going to end our set. We'll leave 3-0 in favor of I'm on a team. You know, uh, in the TOing business, at least for Smash, you know, we used to have a saying, it was a 3-0, but it was close, though. I feel like the 3-0 is yeah. not indicative of how close the Absolutely game was Absolutely not. These two teams. I mean, I, I feel like at any point, you know, the, the wind got a different way. That splat bomb propaganda absolutely could have could have taken this the, uh, the other way. But I mean, good stuff to I'm on a team with the funny name, taking it with the funny 3-0. So good, great stuff uh, to them. Funny name, funny score, it works out. Um, and uh, with that, I believe that's that is going to do it for groups. We'll be moving into top cut very soon, and that's also going to do it for us as a commentary mm. duo. Um, will we will be what we will be taking just a short break on the stream, and we'll be handing it off to our next compare, uh, which. Let me pull, I believe that's Butters as well as Icar. So both of those are really cool commentators. Do stick around uh, and, and see them uh, while we're here. OBT, where can the wonderful people in the audience find you on the internet? All right, hey, so I don't know if you know this, but OBT short for Obese Tyrese. That's my full name on there. You can find me at Obese Tyrese on Twitter and on Twitch if you want to see some pretty cool midline plays. I, I play for Quad Vanguard. They're a nice team. So yeah, you check me out there. And what about you, Cater? You can find me on Twitter at Cater underscore, where I do art and I talk about the things I commentated. Um, don't know if I have anything coming up, but uh, yeah, <laughs> if uh, you'll you'll probably be seeing me at other events uh, over the summer. Um, and yeah, with that, thanks to all the teams that we've seen so far, the Moo, our wonderful streamer, everybody that's in mm -hmm. chat. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with Top Cut, so do stick around. See you.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Launch Point Draft Cup. I'm going to be your host, or I guess co host today, <laughs> Butters, joined here today by. I am Ikar, and I will be accompanying Butters for the Top Cut commentary. Starting us off today, we've got ourselves Bad Choice Road and Inklings Octolings United, aka leaving an IOU in the place of a name. Great job. As we're also starting us right off the bat with Splat Zone's Mako Mart, a very great map for those who like to play the close quarters combat, especially for those tri sloshers and zaps and K shots out there who really take hold of all those walls and alleyways and allow themselves to get into really wacky positions and get them really fast. For sure. Sloshers in general, I mean, not just try, but you've got your soda, you've got your V-slosh. Um, both of those have lethals that are really good for forcing people on uh, off of stacks so you can get up there. And you're right, you can take all of these wacky little positions and really, really force lockouts, especially on zones. Um, Considering how important controlling the stacks are, if you have the enemy stacks, it's going to be very hard to come out of a disadvantage state if you're the if you are the other team. Definitely, which is really important for those who have the ability to aggress to be able to contest those well stacks and then be able to move up to try and take out anyone that's trying to play a back or, or further back or just a back line in general. As we're going into this match, though, it'll be very interesting to see what type of comp each team brings in, whether or not they decide to go for a more defensive comp or a way more aggressive comp. Very, hopefully, we'll be seeing a, a bit of both. Very aggressive comp coming out from both sides. A double oh. armor comp coming out. Sorry, I don't have the names pulled up. My bad, that's on me. As Fine. both teams are aggressing into the middle. Uh, I need to the <laughs> Anyways, I need to uh, neither team are. Go, go ahead. If you want. Uh, neither teams are really contesting the zone. Specials are going everywhere. Zone is a. Flipped, eventually armor coming out as Team Purple is moving forward and getting the positions that they need to get to hold this defensive right now as specials are going long, bombs are going everywhere, and it's really looking like a Purple's doing a good job holding the zone right now, but Team, team Green is moving in with their specials. Yeah, Team Green managing to get two picks on purple. Uh, they do have that inkjet in the back, so they will have specials to defend when purple inevitably pushes up. Uh, and it looks like purple's already starting to gather the resources again, trying to force this splash off of stacks. I believe that is Code, um, who is doing a really, really good job of holding that area, but unfortunately is gonna get picked off by missiles. And that is the cue that purple is going to need to try to take zone here, and they do do it successfully. As team IOU is moving in with those specials, popping the missiles, getting the nice flick with that roller right there, which is going to allow the rest of team IOU to make that push into that mid spot and get the zone. Though team bad, bad road or bad choice road is going to be holding it just for a tad bit more it won't be for very long as team iou is trying to make another push this roller going aggressively getting a single pick but three go down on the, the side of iou as the rest make that a 4k oh. team, team bad choice road. oh I'm, just, I'm being told i flipped the names wrong as team IOU is actually in the purple as they are going in using their missiles holding that zone lead has given themselves has been flipped to them as time is ticking away they've reached the half point mark and they continue to making that push to continue that hold on zone specials are going everywhere the roller on bad choice roads is taking out two of them going into mid hoping to flip the zone missiles coming out and zone is flipped onto bad road Big pick from the Flingza, managing to just immediately take zone. And now we go back into this stall war. Um, uh, the Flingza looks like it's going to be aggressing with one of its slayers. 
Uh, it doesn't look like that's gonna work out. They have to back up here and respect space, but uh, they do go two down, which is, oh, three down now, um, which is incredibly unfortunate because it means they need to really just go again. As Team IOU is once again holding positions and really looking to get a pick before moving into that into their base and trying to really hold out against them. Two specials coming out from Bad Choice Road as they are making that push, holding that mid position, getting the zone onto their side and continuing to make their pushes, grabbing their specials and looking to hold this out. Missiles coming out from Team IOU and delaying Team Bad Choice Roads from being able to hold mid for very long. Yeah, Bad Choice Road uh, was able to cap zone very, very briefly, uh, but they just weren't able to capitalize it. It was still a 4v4 at the end of the day. Uh, it didn't really work out for them, and now we're we're kind of uh, back to where we started, uh, where you've got two people on stacks, and then you have the other team in a disadvantage. So it is very possible that unless uh, someone chooses to push up very aggressively, we might just keep seeing these like very incredible back and forths. As Team Bad Choice Road is really trying to make their push right here, get their specials up. Inkjet coming out in a panic scenario, going down as Team IOU is going to be taking the first set. Or not that set, taking the first match. Very, ag that. very aggressive comps coming from both teams, but it really just seemed like Team I IOU was just in positions that they really needed to be in a them to really work well especially with that tri slosh right there being able to just really take the aggressive angles take those flank ang shots and take those aggressive 2v1s with their teammates and just really doing an amazing job at pincing the other team and forcing them into bad situations exactly and it's like what can you do when you have this try constantly on your tail because okay you can get rid of the try but like you said they're pairing with their team so you have another person to deal with and then you can get pincered so it's like you take you think you've gotten it you take out one and then the rest of the team just jumps you and i think that um that was how they were able to take the victory there was just really 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 potent synergy Definitely, and it will be very interesting to see if the team is able to continue that on Snapper Canal, which is a very good map at allowing teams to pince other players by having such a wide open area with many attack points to get that Rainmaker up onto that podium. There, it can lead to very interesting plays where most of the team goes with one person with the Rainmaker, while that one person goes up and gets the enemy team from behind. And it will be very interesting to see if Team Bad Choice Road will be able to adjust to the aggressive, extremely aggressive play that Team IOU is playing and really go in with it and just call, call them out for it and get those 3v4s. You know, I mean, with, with Snapper Rainmaker, Pop is not nearly as important as it is on most other Rainmaker maps. And so what a lot of teams will do, and if the last game is any indication, is you sort of just ignore Pop. You either paint for specials or you just you just aggress immediately. And so being prepared to counter that is extremely important. Definitely. It will be very interesting to see which if teams decide to go for the aggressive Pop and really try and just rush the Maker, or if we're going to be seeing a slow burn of a match right now, but if anything from the other matches to say, it probably will be. Another very aggressive comp coming out from both teams. The Flings are Rollers switching to the default roller, not very often seen as the special on the default roller is not what everyone really wants to be with that uh, splashdown and curling bomb, which is a very interesting play are a very interesting kit for a roller to have, and it allow the splashdown really allows the roller to finish off low health targets. Absolutely. I think, uh, and, and you can see the, the unfortunate splashdown cancel, uh, but I think the reason you might want to go roller here is is for that ledge. Because you have a roller shark, and you, you don't know where they are. Um, and you always have to watch out for that, especially when you're pushing. So potentially, if you're worried about your defense or if you feel like your offense isn't powerful enough you can add that extra threat as team as the pink team is moving in getting the rainmaker pop 
They're really looking to get aggressive here with IOU popping all their specials, getting the armor off, getting the rain off, getting a pick on the K-Shot as they are continuing to make that push, getting the Rainmaker all the way up to 64 points and continuing to push 50 points already halfway there. 40. Keep continuing to go. The tri slash goes down, but the rest of the team IOU is just sitting up on near the platform, waiting for that Rainmaker to get up there. The Rainmaker is running for it, getting it all the way up to 11 points before they are stopped. A huge play by Absolutely. Team IOU as the rest of the team is holding back, waiting for their picks. Absolutely beautiful. That was a really, really, really clean push. Now they can sort of just sit back. I mean, Bad Choice Road has been pushed back so far. And so now, uh, what we talked about earlier, you can kind of sit back and play the stall game. Maybe you don't need to aggress as much. But as we can see, the try uh, is going to choose to play more aggressively, um, which means that they probably want to just try to get Bad Choice Road to waste their resources. So not only will their pushes be stopped, but they, they can't even make a push to begin with because they keep getting picked off. Team Bad Choice Road popping two of their specials, such as Splashdown and Armor coming out as the Enzap is really trying to contest the right side or their their own hill as they continue to fight the case shot, losing the fight just barely as two go down on the side of Bad Choice Road. Another person trying to fight the case shot, uh, case shot uh, having none of it, getting that double kill and there's four down on the side of Bad Choice Road. Missiles coming out from that K-Shot as the K-Shot is really doing a great job at keeping up this aggression. One goes down on the side of Bad Choice Road, though one also goes down on the side of IOU. Make that two down on the side of IOU. Armor comes out from this team Bad Choice Road as they are going for that Rainmaker, forcing them to move. Missiles killing them, and that is the end of that push. The Rainmaker managed to live for so long after that. I mean, and, and that's good though, because again, they have so IOU has such a big lead, so you can see the Rainmaker is just sitting on snipe taking pot shots. Um, and yes, Bad Choice Road has a successful had a successful defense, they're still at 87, and they have yet to really get back into mid. So even though the push technically was a failure in the long run, it really wasn't. As Team IOU picks the Rainmaker back up and are looking to make another push. Well placed bomb will be taking out the armor of three of their players as the Rainmaker is forced to move on by themselves, getting picked off at, by the K shot as the K shot is sitting on their in their uh, ramp as they continue to get kills, getting two down on the side of IOU. Rainmaker is just being ran at this point. Inkjet coming out from Bad Choice Road. This is their desperation push. They have a minute and nine seconds left on that clock as in another ink counter Inkjet comes out. A well-placed flank from the Gluga Duelies is getting themselves a double kill. Armor coming out so they continue to make that push. Three down on the side of Bad Choice Roads as the Duelies are just continuing to go, finding their fourth pick and going down with that. With 50, 45 seconds left on the clock, Team Bad Choice Rose really needs to make a push right now. Very, very nice flank from the Glugas. Just making making sure, just saying to Bad Choice, hey, if you want to push, you're, you're going to have to deal with our Glugas. You're going to have to deal with getting trade after trade and being picked off. You are never going to have all of your resources because we're going to keep picking you up over and over and over again. Um, but now, uh, Bad Choice Road, Slug, kind of taking that idea in stride, pushing up really far ahead, trying to get IOU off of Snipe, using Splashdown to pop Rainmaker Shield in desperation, but it is not going to work out as Bad Choice Road goes three down. It, uh, it looks like IOU is just going for the classic Rainmaker stall. Uh, so that was a very, very, very good game. I really, really liked how Bad Choice Road played that at the end, but perhaps it just came a little bit too late. Team IOU, also known as Inktlings, Octolings United, very clearly do not owe anything to anyone. But very soon, maybe the Launchpoint Draft Cup will be owing them a trophy. Adaptation, you know, you take your losses and you go, okay, well, I mean, why are we losing? What what did they do that was hard for us to deal with? Um, you look at that, you take that into the next set. And I think that's the nice thing about Top Cut, especially when you're doing like best of five or even Grand's best of seven. Um, and I, I know I, I 
this set is indeed best of three, but in general, uh, you have time to really, really hone your strategies and really, really adapt what you're doing. And especially for Launch Point Draft Cup, where you get to see these really cool synergies develop, uh, it can be really, really, really cool to watch teams get upsets or come back out of deficits. Um, and I think that's one of the beauties of this tournament. Definitely. As well, that was a very great match just to have streamed as both teams were really keeping up their aggressive plays and really just looking for those position those people that are out of position and just really punishing all every single person who was out of position and both teams did a really good job at just keeping up the aggression and really keeping up the kills that they were looking for it's just that team iou just really played into that aggressive positions and just worked really well together with their ability just to pince anyone that they saw just by go having that try slash go in and having another person just look for that try slash and just pince them and get that kill exactly that was a very very good set but as we'll be going into our next set we'll be catching you all a little bit don't go anywhere though there's still more Splatoon to watch.
Welcome back, everyone, to another launch. Well, to the second part. Well, I guess. Welcome back, everyone, to the Launch Point Draft Cup. We're up in the semifinals with two lovely teams, starting with I'm on a team, which is not true. I'm here in the commentator box, and 50% Norwegian, as we are once again joined by. Hello. Uh, yeah, uh, if you don't mind if I talk about the teams a little bit more real quick. You can sure for go for it. Thank you. Um, so I'm on the team versus 50% Norwegian. We've seen both of these guys on the stream before, and both of them had pretty... I, I wouldn't say... I mean, some of, them, some of the games were very back and forth. Um, uh, but especially... Uh, 50% Norwegian, I believe, had some pretty dominant sense. So I think it'll be interesting to see probably two of the top contenders to win the tournament go up against each other in semis. Definitely, especially with a extensive map list starting us off with Tower Control Starfish Main Stage, which is a very surprisingly defender heavy map with the amount of spots that any type of long range weapon can just hold from a top angle and just fire down upon anyone, which really stops those aggressive weapons from being able to push up against and really push that tower if there is a very heavy defensive weapon. And it will be interesting to see if either team can really contest against a defensive weapon. And it will be very interesting to see if we see something like an E-Leader or a Hydra Ooh. come out. Let's see. Very aggressive comp coming from both sides. Heavy Slayer from on both teams. A very interesting choice as the match is getting us underway. Both teams having a lot of paint on their sides. Okay, Sitting skirmishing a bit in mid. Uh, go ahead. 50% Norwegian is in the orange and our other team, I'm on a team, is in the green as they are both contesting 50 percent norwegian is grabbing themselves the tower just to start us off pushing it just a tad bit two go down i mean one goes down on both sides as specials are ready on 50 percent norwegian as they are really looking for that 52 to come back into that mid just so they can pop that armor as they just did the tri slash going down to a well-placed oh. shot as inkjet is ready on the side of 50 percent norwegian Oh yeah, and now all of a sudden, 50% Norwegian uh, popping those missiles, popping that armor, popping that jet, going to break back into mid. Uh, and first things first, we talked about this, uh, but these strongholds, the tower goes past snipe. You need to have snipe if you want to push. You, it is absolutely imperative. And so you can see the jet uh, trying to just take shots and snipe, and you can see they don't have snipe. They, they cannot push past that stronghold, and I don't think you can hope to get tower out of mid, but it is still very much doable. They still have all of their members up there. Junior is painting for armor. Beautiful pick on the Nautilus. Um, they might be able to go again with the tower here. Two down on the side of 50... I mean, two down on the side of I'm on a team as team... 50% Norwegian, Norwegian is making that push, getting the Booyah Bomb onto that tower and allowing themselves to get onto that mid and push the tower just a tad bit more. One down on the side of I'm on a team as make that two is 50% Norwegian is going in, getting the triple kill. Is he going to get the wipe? He gets the 4k! That's a huge wipe on the side of 50% Norwegian as they are continuing to make that push, getting past that first tower as the Booyah Bomb is ready on that 50 gal. 52 gal as they are looking to get another aggressive play right here a huge group of picks right there from that 52 gal as they got the first checkpoint and are looking to get that second checkpoint though oh. that is a full wipe so close though and that was a really really beautiful push uh they have a huge lead they've cleared the first checkpoint which is arguably the most difficult um and so i really really do think that there's a lot of ground to be made up here booyah bomb being thrown onto tower forcing I'm on a team off as a well as a well placed jet. I mean, dually squelters are going to be taking them out. Three down on the side. Make that a four down on Double the side. Of I'm on a team. Both teams are just wiping each other on the floor, just like a mop, baby. As they are <laughs> continuing to go, 
getting their specials up. Three specials on the side of 50% Norwegian, and they are throwing out their missiles, throwing out their inkjet, throwing out their booyah. They're really going for it right now as one goes down on the side of I'm on a team as one goes down on the side of 50% Norwegian. <laughs> Just like a mob, both teams wiping the floor with each other. Massive back and forth over and over and over again. Uh, each time, 50% uh, Norwegian it, like has a really, really strong defense. And then bad choice, or, <laughs> excuse me, I'm on a team, has a really, really strong offense. And it seems to me that it's, it's almost perfectly matched. And so... It's, it's so hard to break out of this if you're 50% Norwegian because it's just, it's back and forth. Just over and over and over again. Another wipe on the side of 50% Norwegian as T as I'm on a team is making a push right now onto the tower, getting themselves to the first checkpoint. Don't know if it's going to get past the first checkpoint. Booyah Bomb being uh, held on the tower, guaranteed to be thrown on the tower. As it gets thrown out, one goes down on the side on both sides missiles coming out 35 seconds are left on the clock team i'm on a team is really feeling that pressure as three of them goes down make that a 4k as another another wipe happens this floor is hella dirty as that mop is continuing to get on movement 30 seconds left on the clock as team 50% uh, Norwegian is doing an amazing job at just pushing into their base and holding that position. The Dually Squelcher is getting themselves into a fight with the 52 Gal. The 52 Gal is going to be taking them out as it's just the Nautilus and the 52 Gal coming off the spawn. They do have control of mid. They do take the tower. That not is in a... Oh, huge pick. K getting rid of the K-Gal there, that's one of your main offensive lines. It's going to be much harder to push tower. Now not going for this flank. Yeah, that's gonna be it. That was extremely strong offense, but also extremely strong defense. Um, but I think at the end of the day, if your pushes are not successful, yeah, I mean, you can't push objective. You can defend for as long as you want, and your defense can be really, really good. But if you can't stay on the tower, then y you can't win. Amazing plays from both teams right there. Highlights to that Dually Squelchers who put themselves in amazing positions to get kills, especially on the tower on the tower riders, and really just doing an amazing job at pushing the enemy team into a bad position. As it seems that the lobby has crashed. as we're really we're gonna be going on to our next match which is rainmaker on black belly skate park i despise this map mode combination really yes why i play backline oh okay yeah no that'll do it <laughs> <laughs> um in yeah no backline's kind of it's so it's so flat it's so small it's so narrow <laughs> It's so it's, hard to play backline. Is a this entire map is very congested, which allows a lot of the teams and or a lot of the, the slayers to do exactly what they like to do in Macro Mart and just really take advantage of all the ramps, all the slopes, all the small areas, all those walls, and just allows them to push up against anyone and really take fights that they are really unexpected fights at any point. Especially if you can sliver your way into bad or into positions that are not expected. Sure, I think a really good example of that would be blasters. Um, I would suggest—I mean, RPD, of course. But judging from the playstyle of these two teams, it would probably be something more aggressive, like Luna, um, which can take pot shots over these these little ledges. Um, and then, of course, you have Tri Slosher uh, and just regular sl Slosher. Um, which can take these weird little corners and these weird little off angles, uh, and they can really, really just play like a strong game of area denial. And if you like, if you can't get rid of them, you can't do anything. But Black Belly allows for those really potent, like little corners, little walls where you can abuse your fall off uh, that make them really hard to get rid of. Definitely, and it's going to be very interesting to see if the teams continue to play the same comps that they will do as Nautilus is a very interesting weapon on this map as it is extremely dependent on having the paint everywhere. It's 
I mean, it already is normally extremely dependent, but on this map especially, it really needs that paint to get to the positions it can do. It, it needs to be at. But as soon as it gets to those positions and has the paint to get in there and exit, it does an amazing job at just stopping the enemy in their tracks and forcing them to fight that Nautilus. Absolutely. And I mean, we've seen, we've seen the, we saw the Nautilus last time. It seems that it, it seems to be working out. I definitely would not be surprised if we saw it again here. I would not be either, as both Nautilus is on that game were very important and integral to that match as it really acted as an anchor for the rest of their team to really look for and allow the other team to make pushes and take 2v1s at extremely aggressive ranges. And it was just a really great mesh for both the teams and having that inkjet with their aggressive plays was just amazing to have. Absolutely. But as we're going on, it will be very interesting to see what type of comp we'll run. If we're going to be seeing a lot more of a support, maybe an NZAP come out, as NZAP is really good on this map and just, well, really good in general at doing skirmishes and keeping their armor supply up, along with adding the suction bomb to the fray. It is a really good weapon to have, especially in a scenario like this in Rainmaker. Take it, but quad shooter it is pretty good here. It, it almost ensures that you have pop, especially like with that zap, uh, which is typically going to be running object shredder. Um, so something like like K shot, T tech, zap, and then you know something else um, definitely works really well here. Any any combination of shooters um, is is quite potent. It really is. As we're going on to our match, it'll be very interesting to see with. How each team decides to handle the scenario that they are given, and let's get on to the skate part. Quad very interesting. There's a Nautilus. There's a Nautilus. A very interesting choice of bringing out the Sea Jet instead of the Knot. Really hoping for that aggressive Ray pushes, as Ray is a very good weapon on this map to have. Instantly coming out right now, looking for that pick is gonna be tagging a few people though their junior goes down as the rest two down on the side of team 50 percent or my bad team nor yep no that's team i'm on a team as they are making an as team 50 percent the region is making an aggressive play right now getting up their specials and Cooking up Rainmaker to start and continuing to get these fights, taking out the Enza or the Junior and painting their path already all the way behind enemy lines. Extremely good push. Unfortunately, going to get picked off by the bomb, but in the end, uh, that was incredibly effective. Um, let's see, 56. For a starting push on Black Belly, that's pretty good, especially when you're going over that wall area, which is a massive choke point. So if that's any indicator. An inkjet coming out as Team 50% Norwegian is making a push right now, continuing to make it. The lead will be flipped right now as the push continues. Rainmaker goes down, three down, as the rest of the team is making a push right here, almost a white. They are continuing into mid, painting up, getting their specials ready as they are just really going. They're taking it down half pipe. Very interesting choice to make right here. Though it seems to be working out somewhat. Uh, one goes down, the duelies go down as the Booyah Bomb is going to be taking out Rainmaker as two go down and the last one is coming off the spawn. Bomb Rush coming out to hopefully get an aggressive pop. Gets an aggressive pick right now. Continues to make the play. Continuing to go and just, well, backing off right now and looking for the rest of the teammates to come back. Right, Slosher just trying to stay there and, and trying to push Rainmaker, but uh, pushing through half pipe is a really weird decision, especially when you're fighting a Sea Jet. Um, that can be incredibly difficult. So I, I'm definitely interested what the thought process was behind that. And I wonder, because if you take out the Sea Jet, you, what, what do you have left? Like, T-Tech, Junior, K-Gal, that's not a lot of range. And especially when you're running um, Dewey Squelters and Nautilus, you can really, really take advantage of that in the choke points. So maybe their win condition is just to get rid of the C-Jet, and that might be all it takes. Maybe it, maybe they, 
Maybe that's what they are thinking. Maybe it's not as team... I'm on a team has the Rainmaker control right now. They pick it up. They have to just get that extra two points or three points that they need in the mid to go down on the side of them. Rainmaker's left to their own devices as the jet is jumping out, saving their specials. As three go down on the side of I'm on a team, Rainmaker is in half pipe. There's no one really there to stop them from making that push. A well placed bomb rush special is coming out as the Rainmaker is rushing it, going for it as. That is a full wipe on the side of 50% Norwegian as I'm on a team is continuing to get back into position and this time hopefully taking that Rainmaker up and getting that two points that they need. Immediately jumping on this opportunity, uh, painting up into I'm on a team's base, uh, immediately taking mid. Uh, it does look like there, I believe that is the T-Tech that got picked off. I think that was a trade with the try. Um, so we're kind of back into one of those weird 50-50% uh, situations, or at least we were. Um, it looks like we're going to be seeing another aggressive push from 50% Norwegian where they try to pincer. As they are continuing to go, specials going everywhere. They are making another push, bringing it all the way up to 23 with two down on both sides. Make that... Three down on the side of 50%, though they are still grabbing the Rainmaker and still running it, bringing it all the way up to seven points remaining, doing an amazing job at keeping that push alive, especially with 40 seconds left on the clock, putting team, I'm on a team, into a very t bad position and forcing them to look and forcing them into that panic state. It is for them, though, but you're absolutely right. In that panic state, it's going to be very hard uh, using that ray to their advantage, uh, going to pipe, um, it, do you think this is winnable for them? It, I mean, anything can happen, in, especially in overtime. With 10 seconds left on the clock, a play needs to be made right now. Something needs to happen as team... 50% Norwegian is picking up that Rainmaker, though the Rainmaker is going to be popped and going Yard. down. It goes into overtime. Two left on the side of I'm on a team. Rainmaker shield is getting popped. Bombs are being thrown everywhere. Stop trying to stop them from picking up that Rainmaker. Rainmaker is being picked up, but immediately Aww. goes down. The second game goes to 50% Norwegian. It's making me wonder what the other 50% is. Oh... Uh... Australian question mark? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That was a that was a great game though. <laughs> really good, um, really amazing game from both teams, especially now that we're heading on to what might be our final map. Probably won't be. Splat zones on New Albacore Hotel, a very wide open map and a very long one at that. As both teams have been playing very aggressive long-range weapons will be very interesting to see if they well decide to continue doing that and if the jet will be switched out to something else weird on this map honestly it's super wide it's very very special dependent and yeah i mean of course if you're running you know something like heisha you're going to be getting missiles a lot but you're not really going to be putting out as much offensive pressure um, especially if you're coming in from the right side, it's just, it's, it's really hard to push through there with your main weapon, even, even when you have specials up. Um, so I, I think we might see a shift to longer range and, and like potentially keeping that sea jet, keeping that Nautilus, keeping that dually squelchers, but potentially we might see some other stuff. Um... I'm expecting a comp very similar to the first comp that we saw on that main stage tower control as this map really lends itself pretty closely to that ma type of matchup as we are really getting into the match right now. It will be very interesting to see if we are correct on this and if the teams will be playing it slightly different or just trying to play it the exact same and keeping up that heavy aggressive and waiting for that inkjet to come out and just really playing around it. Double K-Shot coming out on the side of 50%. A very interesting choice my, as they are really going to go for that missile spam, I guess, as they are looking to get their specials off to start. Uh, as I said before, it's very, very special dependent. You can, you can see both teams uh, that switch to the mini Splatling. 
um, the V try. This is very, very like both of these are very paint heavy. They're very special heavy. So we might see this game. We might see less aggression here, and we might just see more of that stall war. And I know we keep saying that, but Albacore, it's like it's super flat. Um, so after this initial skirmish, uh, we might just see a back and forth uh, for the zone. As 50% Norwegian is making a push right now, the tri slosh is going down. As the rest of team or the team fit I'm on a team is trying to get onto that zone and get the pain on contesting the zone and flipping it to their side giving a hefty 50 penalty as the 52 gal is continuing to make an aggressive their K one of the K shots go down 52 goes down as two down on the side of I'm on a team as 50% Norwegian is not controlling just 50% of that zone but 100% as they are popping that armor getting their specials up and well, putting that zone onto their side, getting the paint on the ground, getting the enemy's paint off the ground, and getting them in the ground. Absolutely. And I, I believe 50% um, Norwegian, yeah, they, they had someone in I'm on a team's terrace earlier, so it looks like they're trying to engage in a lockout, but it's just not working out for them. Um, which is really unfortunate because their pushes have been really good, and I think that they need to just keep doing what they're doing um because they've been doing a great job so far uh so maybe you can see that for i'm on a team there's really no paint on their side of terrace so maybe that's something that they could try if they find they just can't hold zone for whatever reason missiles coming out from 50 percent norwegian zone flips onto their side armor coming out from i'm on a team as both teams are really looking to make the push right now special tri slosh going down on 50 percent norwegian as the rest of team 50% is forced to back off into their further back. They have team, I'm on a team is holding a Booyah right now as they know there is someone in their base behind them. One of their K shots goes down the tri slosh, making an aggressive play, Panic Booyah coming out to contest, that ends up contesting the other Booyah from 50% Norwegian. Zone is in, I'm on a team's favor as three go down on the, their side, 50% Norwegian controlling the zone huge really another beautiful pick there um and now i'm on a team kind of struggling to get rid of this k gal um they're using booyah bomb they're trying to keep themselves alive they're just trying to skirmish uh you can see they're going up into i'm on a team spawn and they don't need to get the kill but they're wasting the resources and now the timer is ticking down in their favor and they're getting those really really precious points especially for albacore zones where the zone flips back and forth continuously Tri Slosh doing an amazing job at holding out to the very end and even trading out the 52 gal on the or the K shot on their team and keeping the zone in their favor. 52 gal fighting out the K shot right now as the zone is almost in I'm in 50% Norwegian's favor as it does flip to their points as a penalty is put back on I'm on a team. This was coming out to force them in team 50% Norwegian into a bad position. Armor coming out for them as well. Missiles coming out from team. I'm on a team as specials are just being flung everywhere. Tri slash going down. So much stuff is happening as everything is going and going and going. 52 go goes down. Zone is out of team. Uh, team. I'm on a team is out of penalty points and time is taking away. Missiles being thrown on the zone. Gonna be putting it into a contested slightly but not fully as time is taking away team 50% Norwegian knows that they have to make a push now one of their K shots is down as the 52 go down down on I'm on a team as team I'm on a team just barely takes the lead as team 50% Norwegian has to hold for that extra one point that they need team has one more push to make this they just it looks like they've just missile they got a huge pick on the try that's massive they might be able to take zone off of this it's a 3v3 they do take zone they need to hold it for 20 seconds 23 22 21 14 seconds is left on that clock right now what will happen is if it goes into overtime they are just really looking for that one pick point that they need missiles are coming out to go down on the side of i'm on a team lead is flipped right now zone is being held and team 50 percent norwegian taking the 3-0 and taking it home there we go that was i think the closest most intense game that both of these teams have had this tournament that was insane
really well played from both teams. Both teams playing around their specials amazingly and keeping both all their players informed. And the double K shot, very interesting pick, but that missiles really helped that zone stay contested. And do you have any more to say right now? Oh, that's for me. I really, really liked how both teams played that, honestly. That's good to hear, but we're going to be taking a quick break. Take out your pens and pencil, your paper and pencils, as we're going to be having a test on this later. So don't go anywhere.
Hello everyone, welcome back to another to the finals of the Launch Point Draft Cup. I hope you guys kept that pencils and papers out because we're gonna be taking a little bit of a notes before we're going into your shout before we get right into our match, we would like to say thank you on the behalf of MIT and their staff to Devil for being a part of the Patreon. For those who also wish to join it, it will be floating randomly over in the bottom right corner. Feel free to go on there and you know, maybe send us a little bit of your money so we can continue to making these amazing tournaments and continuing to keep those drafts going. As we're going right on to our finals right here, we're going to be starting us off with our launch point draft cup specialty, our good old Splat Zones on Wahoo World, baby. Oh, yeah, that's a classic right there. Very a, a classic for launch point draft cup, as most streamers like to say. Fun fact, did you know that Wahoo World Splat Zones is the only Splat Zones map to have a circular zone? <laughs> no one knew that before me. You're welcome. This will be on the test. Oh, God. Why? Okay, anyways. Yeah, Wahoo Zones. It sure is a map. I think considering what both of, well, I mean, particularly what 50% Norwegian has been running, I don't think that they'll really deviate too much from what's worked for them. Um, but I do think Wahoo in particular, there are a couple of interesting weapons that are pretty good, like Blah Blobber uh, is one that can stall zone really easily. Dynamo is surprisingly good here. So there are a number of kind of interesting little niche picks that can sometimes come out of Wahoo. So I'm curious if we'll see any of those. Very interesting. I mean, I would love to see a tent. Tent is always a oh. favorite to watch. Team yeah. Thomas the Windbreaker in purple and Team Veggie Percent Norwegian in the green. A very aggressive comp coming out from both sides. A few subs had to happen for Team Thomas the Windbreaker. So they're going to be playing with a random person that they haven't been playing as Team 50% Norwegian is getting control or at least attempting to get control of that zone to start us off. One, 52 goes down on the side of Thomas. The Windbreaker as we make that two as it's just the Junior and the Sploosh Omatic. Unfortunately, uh, the fact that Thomas the Windbreaker went two down there um, meant that you know, sometimes you can push up with three people, and I think that's why we saw the Junior armor. But then another person went down, and then all of a sudden it's like okay, this doesn't really work. And so you can kind of see that the junior was sort of forced to back out and not really make full use of their armor. Um, and now you can see Thomas the Windbreaker is a little bit staggered here. Uh, they're painting for specials. They need to find their footing. They've taken their plat, they've taken their glass, and it looks like they're coming back onto zone in a 3v3. As three go to make almost four going down on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker, it is not looking very good for them. As the as the case shot is forced to go back to their base, 18 points is remaining. They are team Thomas, the windbreaker are really having to make a push. One of the the 52 goes down, but that is two down on the side of Thomas, and that's going to be first game going to 50% Norwegian. Maybe going for 100% victory. This game. Um, I was really, really. I I think that what cost. Uh, Thomas the Windbreaker, the game was just losing the opening fight. And I think that that's something that you can definitely adapt to going forward. So I would absolutely not write them out just yet because other than that, they played the game fine. They were able to regroup. Uh, they were able to take back their plat and take back their glass. They just didn't have the strongest opening. And that's something that you can easily change going forward. Also, um, earlier we had, or Butters had asked, what the other 50% of 50% Norwegian was. Uh, I have gotten confirmation that the other 50%, uh, 25% British and 25% German. Um, so they have two Norwegian players, if that answers your question. And then one British, one German. That was totally right. I, I think that's really, really cool. I like the global Splatoon community. Breaking news indeed, as we're going on to Clam Blitz on Snapper Canal. We saw Clam Blitz or oh, Snapper Canal not too long ago, as 
We didn't see either of these teams play on it, but it leads. A very interesting map for the both teams to duke it out on, a very aggressive map to be playing on, and hopefully a very interesting one for both teams to take advantage of the aggressive play that they were both running in the last game to continue that aggressive play and continue to get those really aggressive uh, duels that we'll see. Sure. Oh, I'm really excited to see some CDS plays here because CDS is very, very good in the alleys. Definitely. CDS has been showing themselves to be very strong throughout this entire event as they are, well, a force to be reckoned with and a stature deserving of, well, acknowledgement. As we're getting underway. We're going to be seeing Thomas the Windbreaker in the yellow and 50% Norwegian in the light blue. Both teams continuing to run a very aggressive comp. We're going to be seeing a squeezer coming out on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker, hoping to get some bubble picks and control under their basket. The CDS going in, finding themselves a pick on the Octo Shot as the Tri Slash is moving up, taking out the squeezer. Three go down on the side of Tom, this, the Windbreaker as team 50% Norwegian grabbing themselves a super clam and scoring it. Opening fight, uh, and you can see because they're, they're three down. Um, you can see that, yes, 50% uh, Norwegian got uh, a triple, but the Zap managed to stay alive and they really smartly, they chose to back out and hold their armor. And so that meant that you know, when 50% Norwegian was actually pushing, it wasn't as strong because the threat of armor and the threat of, like, all the other team, the, the other team respawning is huge. And now you can see how you play off of that because they're getting a huge counter push. They have their specials ready to go. They have their armor. Um, and 50% Norwegian doesn't really have anything super concrete to counter this. They're three down. They're not as the only one up. Um, and Thomas the Windbreaker has does have a super clam in the back. I don't know if they're going to jump with this or not, but at the very least, they're going to keep the pressure going. Holding out the super clam right now is to go down on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker as 50% Norwegian is getting their specials up and really looking right here as they know the fact that they can't just do what they did last game and just hold positions and wait for the picks. The brush goes down on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker as two go down on the side of 50% Norwegian as the CDS are moving back as they know the rest of Thomas the Windbreaker are trying to make a push right here. Are the inkjet almost ready on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker? Ball does go in as the basket is reopened as it's though it is only the brush remaining on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker as they do go down. Hey, Thomas. Oh, go ahead. As Thomas, the Windbreaker, is forced to go back for of all. Oh. They don't go back for very long as they completely wipe 50% Norwegian as they are continuing to make a push, pushing into the into mid, getting the paint on that ground, getting their specials ready. The Octo Shot having their inkjet ready to go, looking like they are getting ready to make a play on it as they are having a intense battle taking out their adversary as they continue to go in finding a double kill huge picks right here as they continue to go inkjet coming out as they team thomas the windbreaker is getting themselves another clam in that basket absolutely beautiful and i think you can see the the adaptation here where it's just like and we've seen this entire set um uh 50 norwegian is just aggression 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 and, and then, all of a sudden, um, uh, Thomas the Windbreaker just says, you know what, when, like, we may lose the opening fight, but we're gonna be ready to defend, and we're going to be ready to overexploit. And you can see that, like, if you look at the top, um, both teams are consistently one down. And that, uh, honestly, that's a trade almost in the favor of Thomas the Windbreaker, because one less person on the enemy team means less aggression. And I think that they've been able to exploit that really, really well. 
So I'm I'm extremely impressed with how they're playing this game here. Well played. Um, <laughs> a full wipe on the full side wipe. of Thomas the Windbreaker as Team 50% Norwegian is grabbing themselves clams and getting them into that basket, bringing it all the way down to 26 points remaining. They have enough clams on them to end this match right now. Getting some more into that basket as 23... They are really looking to get this into the basket. The missile, using the missiles perfectly to get more into the basket, though it is unfortunately not enough to. S or it did switch lead. No, it did not by one point. Unfortunately, one. as the rest of Team 50 versus as Team Thomas the Windbreaker knows the fact that all they have to do is just wait for the enemy to come to them because the enemy has to make a desperation push. The yep. brush going down as Team 50%. Is making getting themselves a clam, but it doesn't matter because a sneaky jump with two power clams is gonna end the match. There you go. Absolutely beautiful from both teams. Oh my god, that was God, that was extremely back and forth. Both teams just aggressing each other over and over and over again. As team 50% really needs to well keep it 100% with themselves and get themselves back into that action and get right back into it as oh, we're going hard. on to tower control anchovy games. Oh, okay. Nautilus is the first thing that comes to mind. Is Nautilus a lot good? Of, a lot of stuff comes to mind. I mean, a lot of basic weapons work really well in this tri slash, especially. Oh, true. Tri slash really loves this map. Backliners are, are kind of iffy on this. I prefer zones a lot more. But as we'll continue in, it seems that 50% is 100% ready to go. Already knowing what they're ready, wanting to do, I feel the confidence emanating just from the starting screen alone. Indeed. They are ready to go, and uh, again, I think that's just talking about like, if you're if you are comfortable with a comp and it works for you, then don't change it. I mean, like, they're confident in what they have. They've been doing really well with it so far. Thomas the Windbreaker, I really think they have the strategy, um, and I, I do think their comps are good, and their players are really good, and their synergy is very good, um, and they're more than capable of taking this back. Um, but it is possible that they are just going to use a best of seven format to experiment with comps a little bit to see if they if they can find anything that really 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 deals with the aggression of 50% Norwegian. So it's possible uh, to be a big change in the comp. Definitely, as we already have been seeing a lot of changes, and we see another huge change with a lot of their core weapons being switched out, the brush being switched out for that custom blaster and the dynamo roller oh. coming out a very completely different comp coming out a very passive aggressive comp as i'd like to say as the rest of team 50 percent norwegian is making a push in the mid armor coming out on the side of thomas the windbreaker as the dynamo roller is having themselves a wonderful time just shooting yeah. some Ink straight onto the platforms. Dynamo Roller going down as it is just a 1v1 in mid right now. 52 Gal winning it out as 50% Norwegian is 100% control of the tower. They do get mid here. Uh, nice pick. The K Gal now pushing up into fan. I, I think the idea behind this comp is the obviously you have the fall, you have like big AoE weapons with the Dynamo and the Blaster. And it's like, well, if you can't beat them in a the fight, just deny them any space to work with. And so I think it'll be interesting to see if this works. Now, it does look like, uh, I believe that is, yes, this is 50% Norwegian, is, be, is able to push the tower here to the second checkpoint. But this checkpoint is where you get Blaster and Dynamo in particular can set up really, really well. If they can break past Snipe, um, I think it'll be very, very easy for them to reclaim this checkpoint, but that's definitely a tall order, especially when uh, it looks like they're pretty badly staggered right now. As Team 50% keeping it 100% with themselves and the other team, bringing it all the way down to two, but that's a wipe on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker. Their confidence from the start was staggering for the other team as 50% Norwegian 
is taking their second game of the set, doing a, I an amazing job. That's the third game, is it not? They, it's two to one. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> My bad. Third but game, yeah, no. they took two set. They took two matches. Okay. I yeah, no, I must be misremembering. Oh yes, of course. The clams game we just played. A uh, duh. That that was that that super clam was so sneaky. I almost I almost forgot about it. That was a great play on their part. Uh but yeah, I could definitely like I think we can both see what they were going for with the comp. Um and I like the change. I like how they tried to adapt. Uh it didn't work out for them in the end, but I think the effort is absolutely very very commendable and from one from one dynamo player to another, I love to see it come out. As we're going on to our next map, another very aggressive map with Manta Marina Rainmaker. Uh, I've seen some very, very quick matches of this map happen before, so it will be very interesting to see as 50% can just continue to play their aggressive comp and get the early pick and just end it quickly, or if it's going to be going out for a long match and having both teams really duke it out in the middle. We'll see what happens coming up very soon. Manta Maria Marina being a very interesting comp in general as or a very interesting map in general. It's a very narrow map with some open areas, but most of the times that stuff happens is in those narrow cor corridors with those heavy choke points allowing other team the t defending team to fire down upon someone that's trying to rush through and make it extremely hard to push with the rainmaker when there's a lot of people alive so we very important that people are keeping notice of what's going on um God, i i was trying to think of you know some of the key the key defense points of manta and I think that there, there's so many strongholds, and the best way to get through all of them, really, is just to go through Snipe. And I think that's something that 50% Norwegian is probably going to want to exploit with their aggressiveness, is they might just have, like, their try and their CDS just continuously go onto the enemy Snipe and try to skirmish with um, Thomas the Windbreaker, and that might cause them a lot of problems. So if they do decide to go that route, which I think is likely, we'll see if Thomas the Windbreaker can deal with that. Nice okay. pop. Earl, a very early pop from Thomas the Windbreaker as one, two down on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker. Rainmaker is being pushed up and they're just running it already. Going for the wall. Three down on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker. Team 50% Norwegian doing, uh, giving it 100%, bringing it all the way down to 32, making that sweet jump around the side as it 34 points remaining. A huge opening push from Team 50% Norwegian team. Thomas the Windbreaker really needs to do an amazing back play to get it back. I mean, you don't even need to push up into Snipe if you can just do that. But now, I mean, you can see already this Nod is kind of just hanging out um, on Bunker. Uh, they're kind of like 50% um, Norwegian. They realistically, they could just sit back and relax. But with their hyper, they? oh, they're choosing not to. They get a wipe for it. And uh, that that's going to be a KO. As I started off this match saying, if Team 50% Norwegian just gets that early pop and gets the aggressive play that they normally do, as they very clearly showed right there, they just killed the, killed the enemy team and continued that push and popped that Rainmaker straight on the pedestal, bringing our game's total right now up to 3-1. to one. Huge play from Team 50% Norwegian. Trying to go 100% the victor. Indeed. Uh, they need to win one more game to win finals. Thomas the Windbreaker needs to win three games, I believe. Um, so it is definitely a pretty hard deficit. But that was, oh my gosh, that was an incredible first push. And of course, because we all, we keep coming back to this, but the aggression from 50% Norwegian um, is, is, is absolutely insane. Uh, they just do not allow Thomas the Windbreaker to catch a break. Um, and that, that's, that's just 
incredibly, incredibly potent, especially on Rainmaker. A hundred percent, as really just, especially in something like Rainmaker, just having the abilities of all the specials that they had and just the amount of paint that they already needed just for that to for the nautilus to work it, rainmaker just ends up being really great for them as it's i mean just rainmaker is just another nautilus that just needs a slight bit more paint and a lot more time to charge that shot up and team 50 percent just really pushed all the advantages that they had and forced team thomas the windbreaker into positions that they didn't want to be in and made the other team not have time to get any amount of set up ready. Exactly. No resources means no push, and no push means no victory. So when you're being when you're just being denied these resources over and over and over again, it can be extremely difficult to break out of that disadvantage state. Espe espe and like like you said, especially in Rainmaker, especially when you have that Nautilus set up in these really, really inconvenient spots where the Knot can just go, ha ha, I'm here, you can't deal with me, and I'm going to annoy you, and I'm going to pick you off, and I'm going to get a double with Jet, and that could be really, really hard to come out of. So really, like, massive kudos to 50% Norwegian for just playing, like, a very, very consistent game. 100% of really... I mean, it's kind of hard for Team Thomas the Windbreaker to play a consistent game as they had to take that sub just coming into the finals. And it's a, definitely a lot to work with just coming into the finals as a completely randomly random person. They had no idea that they were going to be needing up until that moment. Yeah, and that can be hard, but I do think it goes to show just how determined that team is the fact that they're still going and i do think it is like a game of mentality but i mean guys if you're watching this if you're watching this in a vod keep your spirits up because you're doing well and especially in launch point a launch point draft cup things happen all the time but it's really really important that you just keep going because this tournament is one of the greatest learning experiences you can have if you're a comp player um so learning to make those adaptations, even when they're uncalled for, is is absolutely vital. Definitely, as I mean, realistic, really, just it was overall extremely well played from fifty percent. Like as you were just saying, or just in general, the special usage in that match was just on point. No special oh, yeah. was wasted. Especially with inkjet, the inkjet coming out at crucial times, finding the picks that they really just needed to get, and just doing an amazing job at just getting people out of the positions that they want to be in and putting them into positions that are in a that well are very hard to win. Exactly. Yeah. No, you you summed it up so well there. Oh my gosh. No, that's exactly it. Both team, well, team Thomas the Windbreaker definitely can bring it back though with their very, uh, with their ability to really change up their comp really, well, at very low, quick amounts of time and just with very low, little amounts of knowledge on why they're going to change it or what they're going to change to. It's very easy to, well, it's not easy at all to predict what they're going to come out with and what you're going to have to play up against like a lot of the other teams that we've seen today because a lot of the other teams that we've seen have are very set in what they want to do and yeah. are very good at what they want to do but it's very easy to then play up against what they're trying to do because you already know what they're going to try to do but team thomas the windbreaker is keeping it completely to themselves and keeping it changed up constantly so you never know what type of thing they're going to be pulling out next with right and i think that they're trying to f they're tr i mean yeah because uh 50 norwegian as we can see key they keep running the same comp and so the goal if you are thomas the windbreaker is just to say okay what is the weakness of this comp and then how do we how do we poke a hole in that and i think that 
that's what they've been trying to do. Uh, also, insane opening. My god, that was very fast on the part insane of Insane opening <laughs> from Team 50%. Norwegian as Team Thomas the Windbreaker is forced to be sitting up on their plat, continuing to, well, go in. Zone is going to be contested. Missiles coming out. That isn't going to be just enough, though, as Zone is going to be flipped and three go down on the side of 50% Norwegian as the rest of the team, Thomas the Windbreaker, are forced to, well, not forced, but are moving up and getting their specials ready to be played. Oh, yeah, very, very nice. Uh, neither team really has any big specials ready to go. Uh, miss. Okay, there we go. There's the missile jet. 50% um, going to try to take back the zone. Do pick off two. Do pick off three. That's massive. That zap is going to be forced to back out. Um, and that's going to be a free zone. Well, not a free zone cap. They did not go down without a fight. Uh, but for now, the zone is going to flip in favor of 50%. 50% are getting past their penalty as they are backing off, using their specials, getting the missiles out. Two specials are ready on the side of... Thomas, the Windbreaker. Bubbles coming out, putting the zone into a contested state as they do get a oh. huge double kill on 50%, but it isn't 100%. The team as the 50% Norwegian is getting back in the mid, controlling the zone, bringing it all the way down to 35 points or 37 points as the team, as the Nautilus is really looking to get aggressive again. Zone is back in the favor of 50%, though they are three down. There we go. And I think, um, I think they did a really good job of trying to stall zone there. So now they're going to do, do what, of course, you always do an advantage. Paint for special, push up, get ready to counter the enemy's push. 50% has two specials up. It looks like they just pop missiles, they just pop jet, they just pop K-Gal. So they're investing all of their specials at once. But that squeezer, oof. Unfortunately, getting cornered by the missiles, but the right idea there, right? The squeezer is holding bubbles. It's like, okay, you can use your specials to come in, but when you do, I'm gonna bubble combo you. Um, unfortunately, did not work out that time. And oh, oh wow, that's a lot of aggression. But yeah, it did not work out that time. Um, but I think in a different push, it could be very good. And of course, now we can see, uh, we might get a rerun of that with 50% going three down. Uh, Thomas the Windbreaker has got three specials up, um, and it looks like they're, yeah, of course, they're just gonna wait for 50% to come to them and try to bait them out with missiles and armor and bubble blower and what have you. Booyah Bomb being thrown on a zone isn't gonna be doing much as they three down on the side of 50%. Penalty is completely gone from Team uh, Thomas the Windbreaker as the lead is going to be flipping to their sides. Trislosh rushing down that zone to stop that timer from being ticking. Not going to be going for very long though as time is still ticking. Bringing it all the way down to 9 seconds or 9 points remaining. Team 50% is feeling that pressure and it isn't going to be feeling it for very long as team. Nice. Thomas the Windbreaker. Taking their second match of the game, they're not out of it yet, bringing the total points up to three to two. Uphill battle for sure, but a one that can be won. Absolutely, and I, I really like the adaptation of the Squeezer here. I feel like Squeezer is, is very, very solid into 50% comp, and they were able to they, they both, and like, I, I, know, I know, again, we keep bringing this up, but both teams were able to play with their specials really well. But I think that uh, this time, um, Thomas the Windbreaker was in a more of a position to really like defend with their specials instead of just reacting to what 50% was doing with theirs. Definitely, as both, I mean, both teams did really good usage of their specials. It's just that team. In that scenario, Team Thomas, the Windbreaker, did a way better job at just con keeping control with their specials, spacing out their specials, pushing up with the missiles that they had, and just really doing all that they needed to keep the other teams stalled out. And when they mm -hmm. really had them stalled, or they just were completely down, they pushed up into their plat and did an amazing job at just holding the plat up there and keeping the enemy team from pushing in and 
getting their control and by the time that the other team even pushed in there it was already over exactly i uh, yeah no big 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 kudos to thomas for managing to find a really good adaptation and i guess that that sort of puts it a bit now on 50 percent because they definitely did not that, that they did not do as well in that game as they have been doing uh, and we're going to clam blitz and we know that this was uh before the last game this was the only set that they had uh the only mode that they had lost in so i do wonder if i uh, probably not a difference in comp but perhaps a slight mix up of the strategy um to try to account for like okay maybe we need to hold our specials a little bit more or maybe you know we need to pair up a little bit more um so just little little adaptations like that to try to deal with uh the potential threat that thomas poses definitely it'll be very interesting to see if either team really adjusts especially if team it will be very interesting to see if team thomas the windbreaker decides to switch off of their comp has been working for them really well as they don't seem to do so keeping the same comp as both teams are keeping the comp that they just played with going into our match on clam blitz gonna be very aggressive map right here especially on clam blitz as team 50 percent norwegian is getting the early control of that mid team um team we are on Team Windbreaker right now. You're good. Yes, Team Thomas the Windbreaker going in, continuing to make their pushes, and, well, holding out one down on both sides. Booyah Bomb coming out, Inkjet coming out, Armor coming out on the side of 50% Norwegian, though two of them go down. It isn't going to be long before they change the tide of that as both teams have one down. Now, if I may... Okay, I was about to say uh, they didn't really have any clams there um despite i believe this this kgal pushing like pretty pretty oh up uh, never mind sorry i'm i'm having a moment um the stream is lagging for me a bit on my end so I, i'm sorry um but we are gonna see the squeezer that works so well for thomas coming into basket managing to get the break they do have um the missiles from the jet and the booyah from the kgal the kgal is going to go down before it can booyah uh, but Thomas managing to get a uh, even more clams, a huge, huge lead, especially for Reef, uh, this early into the game. Uh, and I do think that gives them a lot more re uh, leeway going forward, um, because now they really have to, they can play it a lot more slowly, which definitely might be good against the, the aggressiveness of 50%. It really is amazing right here. As with already three minutes and 15 seconds left on the clock, they've already brought it down to 26 points remaining. Team 50% really needs to give themselves 100% right here as one down on both sides. They have a super clam right next to the basket and ready to go, though both teams are one down and a pince is trying to be happening right here from the squeezer, though they do eventually lose the fight, but take down the Nautilus with them as the rest of team... 50% it's getting their specials ready and trying to look for that opening they have armor is coming out along with the booyah dropping allowing the 50% to make a push into their plat getting down the 52 but the try also goes down they are a bit hesitant on this push but they won't be for very long after the missiles are being clogged oh big pick by the jet squad or <laughs> the jet sculpture the cds there or the, the the vds excuse me my goodness but yeah, no, huge push. Uh, just like you said, now they're gonna come up into plat, they're gonna come up into car. Um, unfortunately, it does look like the dually squelchers are gonna get punished, but uh, that, that is a wipe, and 50% uh, still has people in car. They have jumps to supply, they have clams, they have resources, uh, they have the room to build their specials. Kegal, well, Kegal was 50% to Buya. Um, oh, wow. This is a great defense from the, from the Squeezer, again. I, I, I'm so, so impressed with the play of the Squeezer. It's absolutely insane. Um, and that gives Thomas now, they have to, because the Squeezer was like, okay, I'm gonna go in and skirmish. Uh, now Thomas has two specials um, and they're holding armor, which is very, very big with that K-Gal down. They might be able to push back onto bridge. 
uh, without investing too many resources, which is, is, is absolutely huge. So the 52 goes down on mid right now as it forces the rest of Thomas the Windbreaker to back up and paint for their specials. A panicked armor coming out on the side of Team Thomas the Windbreaker. Though they do get a sneaky score of their basket in, that won't be lasting for very long as that is a full wipe on the side of Thomas the Windbreaker. And that all that shot did was give Team 50% Norwegian, an extra power, power clam to work with. They whiff the first oh. power clam shot, though they do hopefully have enough time to get back up there to get that super clam in, though they don't really need it to get many points. Just before they grab it, it disappears, but they did take a lead off of this push. With 33 seconds left on the clock, it is getting really desperate for Team Thomas the Windbreaker, especially with team 50 percent continuing to keep that basket open bring it all the way down to four points was just the nautilus alive they try nautilus to go for more down. points but they don't get it 16 seconds left on that clock team thomas the windbreaker knows that they need to make a push and they need to make it now especially with that timer showing on their screen and starting to make that tick away they have a power clam so they have the guaranteed overtime but will they have the time 20 seconds on the dot is now on that clock Bubble combo coming out, but it isn't going to be going for very long. Two go down. Bubbles are underneath. Two down on both sides. The Dooley Squelch is going into the fight. Not going to be staying for very long. This clam is being scored. They do have time. Pity the clams are going in. Bringing it all the way down to 18. Continuing to make a score. And they flip the lead in overtime. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh my god. That was, that was insane. They had their resources. They had they had the super claim at the end. They forced it into overtime, and they did it. They did that all within 20 seconds. Insane, absolutely insane. Amazingly played by Team Thomas the Windbreaker, bringing it back and bringing us to Game Seven. This is it, the last game of our match, and it's going on to Tower Control on Mako Mart. Once again, it seems that we were repeating our top eight or or at best or round one as we're going through a lot of the maps just on different modes and it's glad to see we are ending it off on mako mart the the second classic that's not wahoo zone <laughs> um but yeah mako mart uh we did already discuss this one a bit and i think that this for both of these teams is going to be the ultimate decider because mako mart is very very balanced and I think that with the play styles of both teams, with what both teams have been running for the past two games, what 50% has been running for the entire tournament, I think it's going to be pretty dang even. It, def, I hope it really ends up being, especially with both the teams running the type of comps that would work extremely well on Mako Mart. It's just going to be a matter of who can really control that tower and who can look at what the objective is and get the picks that they need to use their specials effectively and do all the stuff that they've been doing in the last few matches. And for Thomas, the, for Thomas the Windbreaker, it's a matter of if they can keep up the momentum that they've had for the last few matches and bring it into the station and finish it off. N nice, nice pun. I see, I see what you did there. I, I see it. <laughs> but um, I uh, and last game because that was super intense. We didn't really get to touch on it, but um, Thomas actually switched one of their players went V Jet. Um, and I think it might be kind of game defining if we see that again because especially for Tower, um. Jet, I mean, obviously, it, it can missile, it can missile tower that just stops pushes. Um, but I think it, it really, really contributes to keeping uh, fifty percent off of stacks or out of their spawn or out of their snipe or any of those areas that they might want to get into and just be hyper aggressive. I think the jet is going to deter them a lot from that. So I do think that's going to be if they choose to run jet sculpture again. That is going to be, I think, a pretty crucial factor combined with, I, I do think we'll see Squeezer again. Um, I, I Combined with the Squeezer, 
combined with the Kaya, combined combined <laughs> with the Zap, I think that could be really, really potent here. It definitely can be, as both teams have really shown that their ability to play around their specials and the ability to their ability to slay is really what they are doing amazingly at, and just. It's just going to be up to either, see which team can take advantage of it faster than the other team as Team Thomas the Windbreaker is going to go three down to start us off as they will be bringing it to first checkpoint but not out of first checkpoint as Team 50% Norwegian is holding tower right now and bringing it in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, however, 50% does have three down and all and now thomas is going to take tower again uh and we're going to get a repeat of the opening however this time the kegao has built its special and has booyah it's going to stall the tower for a little bit give its team some time to get back in um and that is that is pretty dang difficult here especially i mean if you look at all of the paint that uh thomas has on the map it can definitely be difficult for a kegao to make it to the tower um, now, in this case, it was not difficult, because the enemy team get, got wiped, uh, doing a very, very good job of uh, schmoving through that enemy ink, uh, which was incredible. And now we're going to see the classic 50% uh, Norwegian playing very hyper-aggressive, that Dooley's looking for those picks, uh, finds two, I believe, pairing with the Knot, really good pairing here. Um, they, go they do go two down, they are going to back up a little bit, but they are now in a position to aggress more once they have more resources. Definitely, especially since they are just being able to hold mid right now, which is a huge thing, especially for getting specials up and getting the paint on the ground. Trisosh going down to a well-placed shot, but the end zap will also be meeting the same fate as the Trisosh, as Team 50% Norwegian still holds control over middle as Thomas the Windbreaker is really looking to get back in there. The 52 gal sitting in there a bit too quickly and going down for that as Team 50% Norwegian is holding that tower and getting one person down for that trade as they are forced to go back. But the tri slash will not be going back for very far and the checkpoint will not be reached as Team 50% Norwegian is forced to get back. Really, really nice defense on the part of Thomas. Doing a really good job here. Um, they are holding those two specials, so even though they are two down, they are in a position to stall the tower if need be. And we're gonna see that Booyah missiles. Uh, again, waiting for their team to come back up, waiting to push back into mid. Uh, this cake out is going to be finding uh, some nice picks, but do get picked off by the Knot, uh, who themselves get some nice picks um, and gives themselves room to take their stacks and and again try to set up for that position because if you're if you're 50 percent right now all you need is an opening where you can maybe pick off the jet or you can pick off the armor and then you can just start going you can go really far up into enemy spawn and so i think that if you're 50 percent, that's what you're looking for but it's really hard especially when you have a weapon like jet squelcher positioned on your stacks it's really, really hard to move out of that. And now, all of a sudden, Thomas is in a really, really good position to snowball this out of control. As team... Thomas is going to be going three down as the rest of... As team 50% is getting themselves back into mid position. Or looking to get back into mid positions. Paint is getting thrown on the ground. Specials getting ready to be made. And picks sure are happening, especially on team... 50% Norwegian as they are really looking and getting the 52 and trying to get that 52 gal out of position out of their hair and debt and well not in commission though the CDS goes a bit too aggressive to do that 52 gal goes down on the side 50% with a five 50 seconds left on the clock 50% really knows that they need to get into their positions and get the tower and go they have a lot of lead to get out of the enemy's grasp 30 seconds and three of them go down it's not looking very good for the missiles coming out from team thomas the windbreaker desperation has been put into full effect by team 50 percent norwegian as the tri slosh and dual cds go down a well-placed shot from the 
Seajet will be taking Team Nor 50% Norwegian down to three players with 12 seconds left on that clock. Team 50 Team Thomas the Windbreaker knows that all they need to do is hold that mid and get their specials and just stop any advances that Team 50%. We are officially in overtime. Two down on the side of Team uh, Windbreaker as Tower is being moved. Points are going away. Missiles are coming out, forced off tower, but it won't be for very long as Team Thomas the Windbreaker takes the set. With the upset too, my goodness. That that Nautilus holding inkjet, because I mean they were able to successfully defend, that Nautilus holding inkjet was scary. I was so, so terrified successful overtime push but that was a fantastic defense on the part of thomas the windbreaker they they weren't even they had nothing to be worried about it was incredible amazingly played from both teams thomas the windbreaker taking it congratulations you are our lpd draft cup champion once again we would like to give a huge shout out to devil for being a part of the Patreon. Feel free to look into it more once you're done watching the stream. Another huge shout out to uh, the captain who is a staff of LPD. Once again, it seems that we have a lot of staff that end up winning the LPD draft cups. <laughs> it's pretty funny, honestly. And huge, huge shout outs to all the other staff that not playing in today for making this wonderful tournament happen on such a regular basis and keeping it smooth and fresh baby yeah nah seriously big thank you to the staff for everything that you do big thank you to twitch chat for showing up uh, and big thank you to all the teams for playing and every individual person for signing up and subs for subbing i mean we appreciate you guys and the tournament could not run without you all a really huge, huge shoutouts, huge shoutouts. As always, you are all wonderful people, but thank you all so much. I've been your co-host, Butters. You, if you may want to catch my buttery voice, I stream irregularly on my Twitch at Butterminer1245. Feel free to stop by whenever I'm streaming. As I normally do a lot of Splatoon stuff, whether it be League with random viewers or keeping it to myself and playing some solo queue and feeling the pain, baby. I'm, I'm Ikar. Uh, I play Dynamo and um, I have a Twitter that you probably should not follow because it's kind of lame. Uh, but it's at Ikar's Icar Icar Other Eye. Uh, I encourage you not to follow it because I spam retweet things. Uh, but if you want to. Also, I do recommend you check out Butter's uh, Twitch chat. Uh, Twitch chat, Twitch stream. It is a regular, but his streams are really good, so big vouch. Alrighty, well, I hope you all kept notes as the test will be being emailed to all of you. I expect 100%. <laughs> but thank you all so very much. We'll thank be catching you. you the next stream. Stop.